weekend, a time for gatherings and traditions, and Frasca in Colorado, a time now synonymous with close finishes. Boulder, 1997, trailing by 17 in the fourth quarter. Rick Neuheisel's Buffalo sandwich two John Hessler touchdown passes around an onside kick recovery to pull within three. Time would run out on the Buffs upset hopes, though, and Tom Osborne's Huskers would go on to share a national title. The next year here in Lincoln, the Huskers' offense was held without a touchdown, but they still held on for a two-point win. And last year, the heavily favored Cornhuskers had a seemingly secure 24-point fourth quarter lead before Colorado's furious comeback. Sets, fires to the end zone. Frank Solich looked out as the Buffaloes' chance to win the game in regulation sailed wide right. And in overtime, Nebraska's Dan Alexander got the Huskers to the brink, and Eric Crouch took care of the rest for a three-point overtime win. Is another fantastic finish in store for us today? We'll find out next on ABC. Our Burger King College football today brings us to Lincoln, Nebraska, Memorial Stadium, where today it's the eighth-ranked Cornhuskers hosting the Buffaloes of Colorado. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler, and happy holidays. We hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Actually, Burger King played a big role in the Colorado Buffaloes Thanksgiving. They were supposed to have a traditional meal here in Lincoln after a walkthrough yesterday. They had airplane trouble, had to stay in Boulder. Their head coach, Gary Barnett, went to Burger King. 100 Whoppers, 100 large fries, $444.44 later, they had their meal there. They didn't arrive in Lincoln until 11.30 last night. They had an early wake-up call today. Now they've got a whopper of a task on their hands to take on a team that's beating them eight straight years, the Nebraska Cornhuskers. That's our matchup today, and we'll see how it goes after we check in with John Saunders and Terry Bowden in New York. ...in this stadium in front of, for the 239th time, a sellout crowd. My partner's Bob Greasy, and Bob, there's 27 of those guys playing their final game. It means a tremendous amount to those young fellas, a lot of them are walk-ons that are all of a sudden starters. It hasn't been the season they wanted, but they still got a lot to play for. This team was ranked uh, number one more than half of the season, but they've lost two of their last three ball games. There's no conference championship or national championship. They're playing for pride in a bowl game. Colorado, as a 19-year-old quarterback, their team is playing as if this is their bowl game, so a lot of those seniors will be chasing this 19-year-old kid. Name is Craig Oaks, and uh, Gary Barnett says, uh, you know, he is uh, maybe our best football player. That sounds like a good news, <laughs> bad news thing to me. I've seen a lot of fifth-year seniors quarterbacks that have come in here and had trouble with this uh, Nebraska defense. If you're going to beat Nebraska, you've got to throw the football. And they will be doing that today, and they've got some good ones to throw it to. With more on that, third man in our team, Lynn Swan. Swanee? Thank you, Brad. Down here on the sidelines, my world, the guy who has to do it for Colorado is number 19, Javon Green. Last year against Nebraska, he had a big-time game, big catch for a touchdown, and over 100 yards. And Nebraska has a history of allowing really good wide receivers to have big days. Just a few years ago, there was a young guy by the name of Troy Edwards from Louisiana Tech who had over 400 yards. That's over over 400 yards in one game against Nebraska. A couple of weeks ago, it was number five, Quincy Morgan, who did Nebraska in 199 yards and two touchdowns. Javon Green is looking forward to having a big day, and he's going to be the challenge for the Nebraska secondary. Brad? No doubt about that. We look forward to that. So does Gary Barnett and Frank Solich. Their teams are ready, so are we. We'll be right back. To Colorado will get the football first. Bright, sunshiny day. It's in the 30s. Could reach 50, though. Perfect day for football here on the day after Thanksgiving. Back deep, Cedric Cormier and Matt Brunson awaiting the kick to Chase Long. And we're underway. And the ball goes out of bounds. And it'll be Colorado now from the 35-yard line. Here's Craig Oaks, the guy that Bob was talking about. 1,500 plus yards, already third in passing yardage among true freshman quarterbacks around the country. Fairview High School this time last year in Boulder, Colorado. A longtime Buff fan, and he's ready to make his first start on the road in this stadium. He's been here before. He likes to study, likes to prepare. Steve Marshall, the offensive line coach, was at Tennessee with Peyton Manning and compares him favorably to what Peyton did in her, his early years at Tennessee as far as studying and preparation of the game. I said he's been here before. That was with his dad, though, as a 15-year-old fan. Now he's a starting quarterback. And number one set to take his first snap here from the 35-yard line. On the ground, Buffaloes are going to lose a yard. 
Cortland Johnson hit by Randy Stella first, and then he got help from his friends, a lot of them. Let's take a look at the Chili's starting lineup. The big ones up front, Ashworth has moved from a tight end to a tackle and become a good one. Bates, Gray, Gerard, and Rogers round out the front wall for Colorado. Cortland Johnson, we saw him have a great game in this one last year against Nebraska with over 100 yards. Nemeth leads the way. Graham's a tight end. Minardi and Javon Green, the wide receivers. Smalley's already mentioned. Green, their leader. Fourth all-time at Colorado and has 43 catches coming into this one. Four wide outs for Oates. Fires intercepted by Carlos Pope. Pope down the sideline. The defensive captain is going to score. Touchdown, Nebraska. Interception of the year for Carlos Polk, and he takes it to the end zone. One of the seniors you saw yeah. being introduced. What a, what a way to start the last game of your senior season. Wow. Excessive celebration penalty is going to make it a long extra point. And Greg Oaks being comforted after his first pass yeah, in the, the Warriors problem, Stadium. The problem there was he looked that way the entire time, and Polk, a fifth-year senior, read the eyes of the true freshman quarterback. Josh Brown will try a 35-yard extra point. Eight fell to hold. And a kick out of the way and good. Two offensive plays, and Nebraska without taking a snap on offense leads by a touchdown. Here's Hollowell. He's just going to run a little curl right here. The linebacker, Polk, is right here. He's going to come back. But watch the eyes of the quarterback. Right here, look where he's looking. He's looking right over here. Watch the linebacker as he slides over, reads the eyes, and picks it off. One tackle to break, and he broke it. Yeah, he's, he wasn't going to get tackled wasn't by the gonna quarterback. Wasn't going to get tackled by the quarterback. <laughs> Ran right over Oaks on his way to the end zone. Well, after a big loss two weeks ago at Kansas State, this uh, black-shirted defense for the Nebraska Cornhuskers wants to redeem themselves and have a good game, and that's a great way to start it. First career touchdown for number 13. Chase Long set the kick again. Just did this a minute ago. Less than a minute ago. His kick will stay in bounds. Cormier from the three yard line. Cormier gets assaulted at about the 23. And that's where Colorado will go to work. So Carlos Polk said, We're going to do it for the seniors today. Boy, did he ever. We know that. We don't have a shot at the national championship, the Big 12 championship. That's out of our hands now. Uh, you know, now it's time for us just to go out there and play football and, you know, play for the guy next to you. Because, uh, you know, some some guys, this might be the last time they, you know, ever put on pass. You know, for the, all of us seniors, this is the last time we're going to play in this stadium. It won't be the last time he'll put pads on. Yeah. From the 23, Colorado, out to about the 27 yard line, Scott Nemeth. The fullback. Let's take a look at the Chili's defensive front. Kelsey, Lore, Kaiser, Vandenbosch, their senior defensive captain, leads the team in quarterback hurries and sacks. Shanley, Polk, who just took it to the house, and Randy Stella, the linebackers. And the secondary looks like this. Craver, Watchorn, Joe Walker, Dewan Gross round out the back four for the black shirt. Second down and five. Oh, second pass of the day. Plenty of time. He'll run with it instead. Tucks it away, got to the 32. Looks like he's about a yard short of the first down. I mentioned. Well, let's take a look at the Dell game solutions. Um, for Colorado, offensively, they got to air it out. They just got to wing it. Now throw the football defensively for Nebraska stuff and based Oaks. And they've already. <laughs> well, we keep it with the theme of, right. the, of the season here. Offensively, gobble up the yards. That means run the football for Nebraska. They've stuffed, they've basted, and Carlos Polk gobbled already. <laughs> and they're gobbling some more, and it's yeah. Vandenbosch. Yeah. I mentioned the black shirts 
of Nebraska defensively. That's a term that's uh, it's an honor for the defensive guys to get a black shirt in practice. And it's uh, you have to work long and hard and be a starter to get that. It's not that I don't uh, see the red shirt. In. <laughs> that's right. Uh, it is a long time jerseys. honor. Yes, Bandit Bosch, you saw come out with three <laughs> fingers up. That's a three and out. And they force the punt. Jeremy Flores to kick. And Joe Walker back deep for Nebraska. Return set up by the Huskers. Wobbly high kick. Walker takes it. Got one block. Trying to get outside. He's going backward. Good coverage. And he's tackled way back at the 32 yard line. Anwan Jones down there. He lost five on the return of a 32 yard punt. 12 minutes and four seconds remaining first quarter. Nebraska on offense when we come back. Nebraska hasn't snapped the ball on offense yet, but they will here from the 32 yard line. We're going to see Eric Crouch in a shotgun. Don't see that much, and he'll run it off the left side, and Eric Crouch almost a first down on his first run. That almost looked like a Northwestern type of offense on their first play. And Eric Crouch, his percentage has been dropping down. He has not been throwing the ball that well in the last three or four weeks. Still a dual threat with those 17 yard, uh, 17 rushing touchdowns, as well as 11 through the air. And he's a good one, but he's been a little bit banged up in the last month. He has. Not only is he the fifth rated passer in the conference, but he is the, the fifth rated runner as a quarterback. He's up around all the other running backs. Here's Dan Alexander for the first down. The senior eye back takes it out to the 46 yard line. That'll be a first down behind this Chili's front wall. Here's the big eaters. Voke, Fanoti, Riola, Hochstein, and Schwab. And Riola and Hochstein already have been named on several All-American teams. We mentioned Dan Alexander over a thousand yards. Willie Miller, Wistrom the tight end, Davison and Newcomb the wide receivers, and Dan Alexander with 1,056 before that last carry. The first down carry it was. He'll take it again. This time brought down after a short game, got a yard, maybe two. Jay Sean Sykes, number seven, in on the stop defensively for Colorado. And here's how that Colorado defense looks up front. Anwan Jones, Justin Bannon, Sean Jarney, and Brady McDonald up front. The linebacking core, Killian, Sykes, and Massoni. Sykes made the first tackle of the game. The secondary, the corners are a little bit nervous at times. Strickland, Robinson, Lewis, and Jackson, Robinson, and Lewis. The safeties are excellent. But right now, Colorado's worried about their cornerbacks. On the option, fumble. The is going to be scooped up by Colorado. That's a, if Crouch doesn't knock him down, he's in the end zone. Brady McDonald, the captain on defense, is just scooped up an air and option pitch. It's the shades of last year when Nebraska had problems with fumbles. Crouch has not been pitching the ball a lot this year. On the option, he's been keeping it most of the time. But this here, he tries to pitch it to uh, Alexander. And if Crouch doesn't get over there to make this play, he's in the end zone. No doubt about it. Crouch really had to duck that sore shoulder to make that hit. Not many fumbles this year as compared to last year. But as we were talking about last night, they don't pitch it as much, we don't think. And that might be part of the problem or part of the reason. At the 27, at any rate, Colorado with a great opportunity here. Johnson, Corlin Johnson into the secondary. Inside the 15, and he's bumped out of bounds. It's first and goal, Colorado at the eight-yard line. Victor Rogers got a beautiful block out in front, and Johnson takes it all the way down to the eight. That's just a well-executed running play right there. And I'm sure that uh, Nebraska defensively is expecting him to throw. That's Gerard and Rogers, the two uh, linemen on the right side of the line, coming around, and he doesn't run into anybody until he gets near the five-yard line. So it's first and goal, Colorado. Trying to tie this thing up early in an exciting opening four minutes. Johnson may be down just outside the five. Johnson, the ball carrier. Stopped on the play. Somebody's hurt down there for the Nebraska. And holding a knee. Huskers. Might be. Yeah, we're not going to. Yeah, it's not. Is it Carlos Polk? I don't know. Carlos but it's, the numbers of the players that are up walking around, it's good to see those numbers. I think it's Carlos Polk yeah, there. I would like to see this. Middle linebacker yeah. who scored the first time he touched it, it is him. He's the leading tackler on that defense, and uh, 
and the unquestioned leader emotionally of that uh, at, at ball club. Rockford Illinois senior as Bob said the leading tackler and they're helping him up. Swanee. Right, Carlos a very emotional guy and uh, just one of the great gamesmen keeps a lot of games in the locker room he challenges all of his players in pregame warm up today he came out and he was especially emotional he was going through the drills and and that spike he saw at the end of his touchdown was something he was doing a lot trying to fire up his game he's got several missions in this ball game and one of the reasons why he's playing so intensely he wanted to make sure that all the seniors who are walk ons who don't get much of a chance to play have a real opportunity to play this afternoon that won't happen unless Nebraska dominates you saw him run off on his own power he wasn't going to be helped to the sideline second and goal at the five Oaks looking to throw on the run and throws it away smart move uh, it was because there was nobody open good coverage by Nebraska and nobody was open. Take a look. Let's go ahead and roll the telestrator and look downfield. The receiver's on the right side. We'll stop it right here. Coverage here, coverage here, and coverage here. That's a smart thing for a true freshman to do on the road. Give it up. Sometimes you hang on to plays too long. Give it up and come back and try to work the next one. Live to play another day. There you go. Third and goal at the five. Both wide outs tight to the near side. Johnson flushes out to empty that backfield. Oaks is in trouble. He's going to go down. Jamie Burrow in with a sack. And he's in for Carlos Polk. And he's getting an opportunity to play early in this game because of the injury to Carlos. So what looked like a possible touchdown in the making is yeah. going to turn into a field goal attempt. you got to take advantage quickly. This Nebraska defense is ranked 20th in the nation, and they're not going to fool around. If you don't get to them and take advantage of it, you're going to pay for it. Mark Mariscal, 6 out of 13 on the year, is going to try a 29-yard field goal. Mariscal trying to put Colorado on the board, and he can't. He missed it. Well, Colorado can't do anything with a turnover. They still trail by a touchdown. They stall at the five, and they miss the field goal. Gary Barnett can't be happy about that. They trail 7-0, and now it's the Cornhuskers from their own 20. Here's the toss. Alexander jumps through the hole and got out to about the 24-yard line. We invite you to stay with ABC Sports this Thanksgiving weekend and have some great golf action coming up for you. Colin Montgomery, Fred Couples, Sergio Garcia all going head to head and hold a hole with a million dollars up for grabs. It's a skins game. Coverage starts tomorrow, 1 Eastern, 4 Pacific here on ABC. Pick up a four for Alexander. Second down at six. And again, we see Eric Crouch in that shotgun. And he'll keep it and run behind Alexander. Weaving his way close to a first down. Eric looks like he's about a half yard shy. Michael Lewis is safety in on the stop. Nebraska offensively is going to uh, two different types. They're substituting three and four players each play. They're going to a power set on one play, and then they'll spread the offense. Frank Solich was telling us yesterday, he says, if you can't run with your power, then you spread them out across the field, and then maybe run. You still run your option with that game. Now they got the power group in there. On a third down and one. And power they go for the first down. Behind the left guard. And a first down out across the 31-yard line. So eighth rank Nebraska looking for the 32nd year for a nine win campaign come into this one eight and two trying to improve their bowl standing and they take on the Colorado Buffaloes who haven't beaten them in eight years and are not off to a good start. This was the first pass play of the ball game by Craig Oaks the freshman and Carlos Polk senior defensive captain for Nebraska took it 39 yards for a touchdown. That's that was where we stand. A, that was a nervous throw by that freshman. It sure was. Here's Alexander stood up at the line. Nice job by Colorado defensively. Killian made the stop from his linebacker spot. And there's Carlos Polk on the sideline had his knee rolled up. And you see they've got a sleeve on it already and uh, Bob we got a replay I think that shows what happened to him. Yeah this is you know it's never pretty when somebody rolls up on your knee and uh, this is where it is right there. That's his leg right there the red stocking. I think it's Gerard number 65. It's just going to roll up on it. And it's not meant to go that way. You know when you get in a pile like that there's nothing you can do. You're really unprotected. Second down 12. Crouch comes up throwing and got Davison. 
Out at the 39-yard line. Matt Davis with a pickup of eight. You know, we were talking to Frank Solich yesterday. He's not only the head coach, but the offensive coordinator. And uh, he was saying that, uh, you know, Crouch has not uh, been throwing the ball well. They've lost two of their last three games. So let's change things up a little bit. He told me that uh, play calling is, I, I said, you have to watch a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, but that's the fun of it. He says, I enjoy doing that. So that's that's the fun of, uh, of the games is calling the plays. This is their ninth run against that one pass. And that run didn't get him a first down. Sean Jarley makes a nice play on Dan Alexander. And it's fourth down and two. Good job by Colorado. And so Nebraska will have to give it up. Back deep, John Minardi, one of the wide receivers. Colorado is second in the nation in returning punts. They've always been good at that. Yes, they have. Uh, ben Kelly last year, Minardi, and also Javon uh, Hollowell, the, the uh, small wide receiver, has returned the punt. Hayden fell the punt. If he gets it away, and he doesn't, it's blocked by Colorado, and they'll cover it at the 24-yard line. Boy, a total breakdown there. There were five white shirts around there. I think Jeff Brunson is the guy that got the block. And any one of five or six guys could have picked it up, maybe, and run it in. It's the third block punt by Colorado this year. So another big opportunity for them if they can capitalize on offense. Over here, take a look. He's going to come in from the right side. It's going to be a sea of white. Number 49 just gets inside the outside protector. And, and blocks it. Hayden felt and nobody lays a hand on it. Five guys could have picked this ball up and run it in. <laughs> they just fell on it. Brunson's the guy that covered it, blocked it, and at the 23-yard line, the offense goes to work. Play action, bootleg. Oaks looking to throw. Finally does and skips it off the hands of the intended receiver and the defensive back. Oaks is going to go back in the huddle. And he's going to say, look to his receivers and say, hey, guys, come on. Somebody Some, get open. Somebody's <laughs> got to get open here. <laughs> the intended receiver was Graham, the tight end, and it was Scott Shanley, the outside linebacker, who made the play and actually got his hand on it. So Oaks is off to an 0 for 3 start with an interception. I'm thinking, I'm sure that Solich is thinking, you know, the last punt we got blocked, we lost the game over in Norman against Oklahoma. I think they have to respot the ball here. It's at the 23-yard line is where the stick is set on the far side. So second down and 10 at the 23. And Cortland Johnson spins inside the 20, got about four. Vanden Bosch in on the tackle. Swanee, you got more on Carlos Polk? Well, they, they took him off the field. He was on the sideline laying down. They were working on his right knee, comparing it to his left knee, trying to see what kind of flex is in there. The Nebraska head athletic trainers and staff, they do not give injury information to anyone on the sideline. Uh, they took him into the locker room. He looked like he was okay when he was standing up in terms of it not being a great deal of pain. But we'll have a stronger indication as to how severe an injury he has as to when he comes out in this first half. We'll keep an eye on it. Third down at six. Oates looking to throw if he can get it away. Now he's got some green in front of him. Pump fakes and he's going to be taken down from behind by Joe Walker from his safety spot. And so again, third down fails Colorado and they can't find anybody open. Well, or at least Oaks can't. Nobody open and Oaks, is, Oaks looks like he's just going in like uh, half motion. Everybody's up to speed and uh, Craig uh, is just looking into the sun on the road in a hostile environment for the first time and uh, He's playing about half speed the other guys are right now. So Mariscal, who missed a 29-yard field goal, is going to try a 37-yard kick here. He's got a better spot more to the middle of the field. And it's blocked. And Nebraska's got it, and they're going the other way with it. Down the sideline. It's Kelsey. Kelsey's got it all the way to the 26. Randy Stella blocked it. Yeah, we're having a block party today. <laughs> yeah, block party. What? 
just as the punt was blocked the same way. Stella's going to get inside the wingman and block the punt. Right there, he gets his hand up. Great effort. Kelsey on the other side picks it up. This is a real art of blocking kicks. You got it. There's certain guys that are good at it, and Stella is one of them. So that's Nebraska on offense with a touchdown lead, and here's Eric Crouch, and he's going to take it. Eric Crouch, touchdown. A beautiful hole opened up on the left side, and you could see that one coming 27 yards away. His 18th rushing touchdown of the year. So finally someone does something with a block kick, and in this case it's the Cornhuskers. They're about to take a two touchdown lead if Josh Brown hits the point after. And he's got it up and good. 448 remaining first quarter. And the block field goal leads to an Eric Crouch touchdown. 14-0 Huskers. Now an Eric Crouch touchdown that's moved him into the number three spot all time in total offense and Tommy Frazier and Jerry Taggy very much in his sights. He just passed Dave Hum. Hum did most of his humming it with that left arm. Crouch does a lot of it with his legs. And Crouch has another year left. Yep. Long's kick. Three yards deep for Hollowell. He'll bring it out. Hollowell across the 20. Cartwheels his way to about the 23 yard line. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Dodge and nearly 3,000 dealers who invite you to come see what's different. Burger King got the urge. Tostitos dig in kick back stay all season and Pacific Life annuities insurance investments use the power of Pacific Life. I think this is Finotti that's loading up on about a <laughs> half a pound of bird just on look at this plate yesterday. That's one of the big eaters. Hey. That was his second helping. That was his second <laughs> plate. That's right. Here's Oaks rolling out. He'll keep it. And he's going to get a first down. So his first positive play of the day for Craig Oaks, about an 11-yard run. Go back to the touchdown. Watch the block of Wistrom right here as he's going to come down and block the linebacker right there. Now, the big lineman right there, Finotti, we were just talking about, he doesn't look, he didn't have anybody to block. <laughs> he's looking around. The fullback blocks him. I tell you, when you got big guys running through holes like that size, yep. he's 235 pounds. There's Raul, the All-American as well. At the 33 now, Colorado down two touchdowns. Portland Johnson in the open field. Johnson, good looking run out across the 45 to the 46. We'll give him 12 or 13 before Randy Stella can bring him down. Cortland Johnson, as we mentioned, had a big game in this matchup last year. 25 carries, 135 yards for him in that very close ball game that went to overtime a year ago in the cold in Boulder. Yeah, he's the leading rusher for the Buffaloes coming in. And the other running back that was helping him earlier in the season, the true freshman Marcus Houston out for the year with a hip flexor. That means Bobby Purify is the backup now, and there he goes. And Purify goes for eight yards. He's a true freshman as well, so the running back situation looking good for the future for Colorado. Uh, you got that right. And with Oaks, uh, this kid, uh, the young uh, freshman, true freshman quarterback, that Gary Barnett says, uh, you know, he is the best player on our ball club. Yep. A true freshman, and you've got a running back, um, Marcus Houston, that we're talking about, and the rest of the running backs. It seems to me like the skill positions are, are pretty well set for the next couple of years. Absolutely. At the 45, second down and two. And it's Johnson. That'll be close, but I think he's a couple feet short. Scott Shanley having a good game in that outside linebacker spot. The sophomore made the stop. You're talking about Marcus Houston. They're so high on him. The freshman tailback who had the uh, hip flexor muscle tear in the fourth quarter against Washington. And Gary Barnett is hoping that they can get a medical red shirt on him because he didn't play more than 20 percent of the team's plays this year. Yep. It's a young team. In fact, he brought Barnett brought a lot of the players, the young players, to this game today just to 
get him to see the environment on the road at Nebraska. Third in the yard. Whoa. Third in the yard. And Brandon Drum just got banged. <laughs> Took a step forward and three back. He sure did. <laughs> he might have gotten a first down with forward progress. He ran into Jason Lohr. And as Bob said, he had about a yard forward and then three back before he fell down. And no, I don't think he got it now. They spot it back at just inside the 44. And so it looks like fourth down in a couple of feet. And Colorado's going to go for it. There's a look at the line of scrimmage. Boom. There's just nothing there. There was, uh, there was no penetration one way or the other, but there was just a line there. Fourth down. Colorado goes for it here. Down two touchdowns. Portland Johnson, uh, I don't know, a second effort got it for him. Yes. Troy Watchhorn hit him in the backfield, and Cortland Johnson spun away and got a first down. So they put it down just outside the 42, and you'll see our first and 10 line presented by Pacific Life is right about down at the 32-yard line. Victor Rogers is the injured player, the right tackle. He's had some injury problems uh, this year with a with a knee. He had a week off to prepare for this game, and uh, it looks like it. I didn't think it's. He didn't get up like he had a knee problem. Nope. Take got, his time coming got off. Got hit though. in the stomach or something. Yeah. Minute 45 left in the quarter. And coming up tonight. Reminder, ABC invites you to start a new tradition with a special family edition of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? See parents and their kids go for the million. That's tonight at 9, 8 Central on ABC. Right after that, we're going to have a show that says, who's going to keep the money if the kids and the parents both win? <laughs> <laughs> Who gets the money? That's right. Yeah. Seventh play of the Colorado Drive. Play action. Oaks the slant. Tipped. Almost intercepted. And a penalty marker down in the backfield. We might have a roughing the passer penalty. Oaks took a shot back there. I think he got Vanden Boshed. I think the pass right, was partner. incomplete intended for Javon Green. Ball was a little high. Could have been caught, but uh, I think you're right on the call about uh, roughing the passer. Terry Turlington, our referee, retiring the after the roughing season. The pass. Automatic first down. Well, this will be Terry's last game at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, and he's on a lot of them here, and it was a roughing the passer. So Oaks will take the first down any way he can get him as he got Kyle Vandenbosch on that last play. And Vandenbosch will take your head off sometimes after the play. Well, well you know, take your leg off. Well, actually. And, and it really, really, he was thrown into him by the uh, by the blocker that was over there on that side, the tight end, the Sipniewski, number 47. So it really wasn't anything intentional. So it's a first down at the 27 for the Buffalo. Trailing 14 to nothing. Toss sweet. Portland Johnson. Boy, he had an opening. Took a big shot in the secondary and still got almost 10 yards. It's impressive running. Very nice runner. This Nebraska defense is 19th in the nation against the run, only allowing 105 yards a game. He might have gotten the first down. He did. Colorado already has nearly 60 yards rushing in the first quarter. Great hole there. So first down at the 17. Colorado's been down here several times. They had a missed field goal and a blocked field goal. And they got a first down again at the 17. Two tight end set. Here's Oaks rolling wide open green in front of him. He overthrew his receiver and it's almost intercepted. DeWan Gross almost had a gift in the end zone. Oaks may have been better left to run that football. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a play that a lot of teams are running. And uh, he, he was outside the pocket. He's trying to hit the tight end as he's going to roll out this way. Now, not, there's not many people open, but there is an opening just a little. He's trying to get the ball right here and just overthrows it. You know, it was it was open for a little bit, and he knew it. He said, he had, "I got to throw it well. I'm on the run," and he's just not settled down yet. He's 0 for 5. Whoops, and a pitch to nobody. A whistle had blown. <laughs> the tailback didn't move because he heard the whistle. <laughs> Vandenbosch was licking his chops there, trying to get to that football. But the whistle had stopped play. 
And what the Buffs, what the Buffs and Barnett needs, and he knows it, is a completion by his young quarterback on the road. Steve Watson, the offensive coordinator, calling the plays. And, uh, you know, there aren't many easy things against this Nebraska defense, but the quarterback needs to get into some rhythm, rhythm and some positive flow. He'd take any kind of completion. Yeah, right now. you know, 0 or 5 and an interception. That's not a good way to start. Three wide receivers for him here, including Hollowell, who's in motion. On a second and 15. Oaks trying to fly one out there to Hollowell, and that's incomplete. And that is an easy throw. I mean, they're trying to get the easy things to him. Hollowell just wasn't wide enough. They got the ball snapped too quickly. The timing, all these little things, the back was in motion. The little things, he should have been a little bit wider before he snapped the football. So now they face a third and 15. And the way they've been kicking the football, they would love to pick up that 15 because the kicks certainly aren't automatic. One well, is missed and one's been stuffed. Then the next thought is you, you may not even go for it. Uh, you may, if you pick up seven or eight, ten yards here. Try it again, huh? You may just go for it on fourth down. Just under a minute left in the quarter, and Colorado is still looking for a third down conversion. This is a long one. Oaks hit as he thrown, and we might have interference now on that hit. Uh, that one, Keo Craver met the receiver before the ball got uh, there. It was very close, but I think it was a little bit before the ball arrived. Minardi was the intended receiver. Craver, the junior cornerback, who's a good one. gets hit by Vandenbosch who's making uh, making his presence felt back there in the backfield. First down. And a first down by penalty. So they had a late hit on the quarterback by Vandenbosch and now the pass interference on Craver and that's helping him move down the field a little bit. And the first down is really where the original line of scrimmage was. So first down again at the 17 for the second time on this drive. Two tight ends in there. Graham and Sipnuski. Portland Johnson's been the only bright spot on offense so far, and here he comes. And he runs into a pile of red. Got about two to the 15. Jeremy Slechta made first contact along with Lauren Kaiser. Well, you look at what Colorado has done on their first four possessions. They were intercepted and then they got a punt off, missed a field goal, and then had a punt blocked. I mean, a field goal blocked that was returned by Kelsey to set up Nebraska's first score. And two of those possessions, they started with great field position inside Nebraska's territory. Again, two tight ends and the fullback Nemus in a slot. Here's a play fake. Oaks flares it out there, completes one, finally. And got it down to the 14-yard line. Not a big gain. Graham is tight end. And right there to meet him was Scott Shanley. But he gets his first completion at the last play of the first quarter. And Colorado trailing the Nebraska Cornhuskers at the end of one, 14 to nothing. Nebraska leading Colorado by two touchdowns with the Buffaloes again in scoring territory but again facing a third down a long six 12th play of the Buffaloes drive five wideouts for the freshman Oaks and here comes a blitz throws in a hurry incomplete and no flag that time on Shanley who ran over Hollowell yeah Oaks is just not throwing well he's not moving his feet not setting his feet there was a receiver open he just needs to settle down a little bit and it's not surprising that a true freshman would come into this environment Brad and, and, and struggle early Yeah, they're going to try another field goal Mark Mariscal has had a day to forget so far this will be a 32 yard attempt missed one and had one blocked This one he's got airborne. And not only that, he got it through. They almost had it blocked, though. <laughs> it was close. Mariscal hits from 32, and the Buffalo's on the board. So they had a drive that had a little bit of everything. Some pretty good running by Cortland Johnson. A pass interference and a roughing the quarterback call that went in their favor. And they march it down the field and get three. But at least they're on the board. Now they can start building from that. Some, some momentum has come over to their side. 
Gary Barnett's team that had the uh, early rise, early wake up call this morning. Swanee, they're thinking about maybe doing that in the future. You were here. You were hearing, right? Well, that's what I talked to Gary Barnett, and I talked to several of the guys on the football team. And at Northwestern, Gary's team always stayed at the university, practiced there, had security of their practice, and left late in the evenings. The only team they didn't do that for was Penn State, because you had to land in Harrisburg and take about a two and a half hour bus trip. But in the Big 12, his longest trip is only about an hour and 30 minutes, and he relayed that message to his players to calm them down, to get them to know that hey, this is no big deal. But but the one thing I think is a big deal is that they're an hour earlier at Boulder. Yep. So when they kicked off at 11 o'clock, it was like 10 o'clock for them. When they had the pregame meal at 7 o'clock, well, that's like 6 o'clock six o'clock in the morning for them. So they might not have the edge they normally have in the afternoon. They had breakfast earlier than we did. I'll tell you that they much. They may not Here's have the had kick. steak. They <laughs> <laughs> Here's the kick. Mariscal knocks it deep. Joe Walker takes a knee seven yards in the end zone, and Nebraska will work from the 20-yard line. Coming up, Monday Night Football. It'll be Brett Favre and the Packers traveling to Charlotte to take on the Carolina Panthers live at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. And reminder on Sunday night on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern, the Giants try to straighten their ship out a little bit. They'll travel to Phoenix to take on the Cardinals who are struggling on defense. Giants coach Jim Fassett this week says, I guarantee this team's going to be in the playoffs. Yeah, it seemed right. to me like uh, Jim uh, Fazer uh, is ranting and raving a little bit at the media up there. Yeah, I think so too. It gets to you after a while. Yeah. Here comes Buck Calder down the sideline. He's getting to the Colorado secondary. All the way to the 42, almost the 43 yard line. So Corral Buck Calder, another one of the senior eye backs. The offensive line sets it up. Fanoti is 77. Volk is 58. They come around. Volk gets a nice block right there. You're going to see it up close right here. Buck Holder just following those two big guys. And why wouldn't you? Boy, that's a good look, isn't yeah. it? One of, the, one of the best offensive lines in the country. It looked like the old Green Bay Packers were in red on that sweep. Here's Crouch coming up firing and incomplete. Davison was the closest man, and Eric Crouch is going, hey, my fault. Yeah. Threw that one too far. Yeah. Wistrom was the intended receiver. He came into the game tied with Matt Davison for the top spot as far as number of receptions. Davison has a catch in this one. Wistrom does not so far. And in the two losses, two of the last three games that uh, Nebraska has played, they've had guys opportunities to make plays in the passing game, but haven't done it. I'll try play action here, down the middle. And that one's too high, and Wistrom was the intended receiver. A nice drop by the linebacker, Aaron Killian, who got a hand on it. Now everybody plays Nebraska. Most everybody plays it defensively the same way, and that is seven, eight, nine guys in the box to stop the run. And you've got a lot of single coverage on the outside. Everybody gangs inside to stop the Nebraska run, and they try and uh, throw the single coverage downfield. Wistrom that time uh, not getting uh, open to receive the football. Here we'll see Crouch in the gun again as they spread their formation on a third down and ten. Might have some motion. Crouch fakes a shovel pass. I thought the tailback was out too early. Ball carried by Crouch. But no flags on the play, and they drop Eric Crouch, and Colorado's right defense does a nice Killian. job again. Killian had a nice series there, his outside linebacker spot. Colorado defensively is like 99th in the country in overall defense, but as Gary Barnett was saying, this game is special. The guys treat this game a little bit differently. It's a it's a red letter game uh, with Barnett uh, when he got back last year. We established it as a special game for the Buffaloes. Wanted to take it back to Bill McCartney's days when Mac, Coach Mac kind of started that. Remember they blocked the last one. This time Hayden Bell gets the kick away. John Minardi camps under it at the 14 yard line. Minardi down the little alley. Nice return out to the 29. 15 yard run back and Colorado's got it back on offense trailing 14 to 3 when we come back down 
He got Nebraska their first touchdown on an interception return. He's their defensive captain. He hurt his knee on the next series, but a guy that's got a pet crocodile you can't keep down. Carlos Polk is back in the lineup for Nebraska. And there's the play on the first pass by Oaks. 39 yard return for the touchdown to make it 7 to nothing. And he's back out there. Wounded wheel and all. Here's Oaks. He'll keep it and go down. And it's Vandenbosch who's having a huge game. Those two defensive captains, Pope, Vandenbosch, Kaiser's the other defensive captain, and all of them have raised some havoc today so far. Yeah. Victor Rogers is back at uh, offensive tackle for uh, Colorado also. He went out a little earlier shaking up. Second down and long. Here comes a blitz. Oaks comes up fire. Nice catch. Snatched out of the air at the 34-yard line by Cedric Cormier. And a pickup of six. Probably the best pass that Craig's thrown today so yeah. far. Timing is just a little off. I think Craig's a little off. I think everybody's rushing their routes a little bit. And the coverage is there. Nebraska is known for tight coverage and a lot of man coverage. And they've been criticized because some of the teams in the past that they lost to, Kansas State and Oklahoma, both hit some, some plays downfield on them. But when you play the defense aggressively, you're going to play a lot of man coverage in the secondary. 0 oh, for 5 on third downs. Oh, they won't get this one either. I'll tell you what, Javon Green got a mouthful of Clint Finley. Yeah, well, Craig Bowl, the uh, defensive coordinator, said we're going to mix it up a little bit. Every now and then, we're going to play some zones. So those crossing routes, if the guys catch a crossing route, we're going to have somebody there to hit them. And that's exactly what happened. And Oaks takes a hit from Kelsey after he delivers. He well, this, got one right in the yeah, chest. This is not good. You're getting hit every time by the quarterback. He says, come on, guys. I'm supposed to throw the ball, get rid of it, <laughs> not get hit. We talked about it in the open, though. You got a 19-year-old quarterback running away from a bunch of seniors yeah. who can smell blood in the water. Flores to kick. Joe Walker back deep. Walker's returned a bunch of kicks for touchdowns in his career. High kick. Gonna have to fair catch this, isn't he? Hit the top of one of the up man's helmets. Hit his own man. Colorado trying to scoop it up. Can they get there? That hit the Nebraska up man in the hat. I think Colorado got it. I think it was Troy Watchorn who had it hit him in the helmet, and Colorado's got the ball. And it's their putter. You gotta love that. <laughs> Kick the ball, go down and recover it. Yeah. No fair catch, so therefore he's not calling his man away. It was it Newcomb, I think, number 12 it hits. See, Walker doesn't fair catch, so he doesn't. If you fair catch, you should get away, get away, but he doesn't do that. It was Troy Watchhorn, and it should have been watch out yeah. instead of watch horn. It's 42 instead of 12, and it hit him right on the head. I thought for sure Walker was going to call fair catch on that punt. It was so high to start with, so not a good special teams play at all. Frank Solich isn't going to like that much. Meanwhile, for the, what, fourth time in the ball game, we've got a strange occurrence on special teams. We've had a blocked punt, a missed field goal, a blocked field goal. Now we had a punt hit somebody in the half. And you think special teams don't mean anything in a ball game? <laughs> I, Brad, there's about 35 special team plays in a ball game. That's a lot. Yes, it is. It's a big percentage. A lot more than anybody thinks about. Exactly. Oaks to throw. Maybe. Here comes the heat. Shanley almost had him. He throws finally into a bunch of red, and it's going to be intercepted in the end zone. Yeah. Erwin Sweeney's got it. And a penalty marker down as well, back at the line of scrimmage. So hold the phone. See, that's panic right there. That's a true freshman trying to do too much against an aggressive defense on the road. Penalties on Colorado. Yep. It's holding. And it's declined, obviously. Yep. <clears throat> On the offense. Well, first of all, nothing's open, so you're going to scramble. Nothing's available. Now you say, all right, get rid of the ball. The coaches tell me, get rid of the ball. He tried to probably throw it through the end zone, or he saw a man open, but you just can't throw it up for grabs. Oh. And you saw a very agitated. Not only Gary Barnett, but before that, Frank Solich. And I think I know why Frank's mad, because he thought he was in the end zone. I quite frankly did, too. I thought this was coming out to the yeah, 20. No question. That's about as hot as you're going to ever see Frank. Yeah, that's right. And now they're holding Frank back. <laughs> he might be a little guy, but he was a heck of a fullback. <laughs> he was. <laughs> and they're holding him from the side judge right now. 
<laughs> oh, things are getting warm here in Lincoln. So they'll work from the one. And Willie Miller is hit in the end zone. Gets out to the one yard line. No question that was a big call because because it was it was it was intercepted right on the goal line and his momentum I think took him in. That's what I thought from here. There's, there's, so yeah, he's, in, he's in the end zone. Yeah, but right there's, now. there's intercepting momentum. There's if the momentum carries you into the end zone, I think that that's you're into the end zone. It's a touchback out to the 20. I thought his whole body was in to start with. I don't think it was even close. So instead of working from the 20, they're still working from the one. And again, they go straight ahead. And swarmed under after getting out to the line of scrimmage and maybe getting another foot. Jayshon Sykes hammers Willie Miller. And now it's third and ten from about the well, let's see if they put it down at the two yard line. You know, they put it at the three actually. There's this intercepting momentum. If you intercept the ball, if you're if a receiver's going downfield and, a, and the defensive back is going inside the five or the three yard line with him, and the defensive back intercepts it and runs into the end zone, it That's comes good. out to the 20. Right. Now it's third down and eight. See if Nebraska will risk a throw from here. Colorado brings everybody up. They're showing blitz. They back out of it. And on the option, it's Crouch. And Eric gets out to the 10-yard line, which at least gives him some room to punt from. Here's another look at the interception. He goes high in the air. Now he's falling back. He's going to fall in the end zone. Falls in the end zone. His butt's completely yeah. in the end zone. Now that could be at the one yard line. I have no idea. Yeah. But at any rate, now they got a kick from here. So the good news was they got an interception. They thought they'd have it at the 20. Instead, they've got Hayden Felt, who's already had one stuff today, five yards in his own end zone. And don't think the Buffaloes aren't loaded up right now. They got everybody up tight. And it came from over this side. And they got close again. They didn't get it, but they got very close. Minardi gets back to the 39. Now an end around. Little razzle dazzle, but a long way to go for Michael Lewis. Thank Lewis you. got a block, got the corner. Lewis coming back the other way and got it to the 48 yard line. Wow. That was something. Wow. Normally, on a reverse, if you've got it planned and the ball is kicked that far to the sideline, you don't do it. You just go ahead and run it up the sideline. Well, they got, they ran about 100 yards to get 13, but it looked good. Lynn Swan and our Thanksgiving ABC crew with you on this day after. We hope you had a good holiday. And this football game has had some strange twists so far. Colorado trailing 14 to 3, 9-22 to go in the half. But they start again in Nebraska territory for the fourth time today. Portland Johnson got about a yard, and that's it. Well, we talked about the young quarterback uh, going against this defense. The first pass of the game is picked off. He's been he's been rattled and gotten after, basted and whatever. <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, if true freshman quarterback, you got another quarterback sitting over there on the sideline, a junior college transfer that has played some this year, started a couple of games. Pesavento. You might do this quarterback a favor, Oaks, by setting him down, letting him watch a couple of series on the sideline, and then get him back in the ballgame. Good point. Second and nine. This time, the Oaks hooks up with his receiver. Out of bounds at about the 39 is Minardi. And Bob and Brad, one of the things that they've asked Craig Oaks to do to protect him a little bit because he is a young guy is throw a lot of the short passes so he doesn't have to throw the ball deep. Well, that plays right into the hands of the secondary for Nebraska. If the receivers are not going to press him deep and stretch the field, then they can sit on the short routes. Just like when Carlos Post picked that one off for a touchdown, he was sitting on the short route anticipating it would come. And sure enough, Craig Oaks came to it. He's all of six on third down conversions all under seven yards. At least they've got a shorter one here. Third and a long two. Corlin Johnson's got this one. He's got a touchdown. Corlin Johnson's going to take it. And Colorado's back in the football game. 39 yards as it opened up for him off the right side, and he cruised to the end zone. I think Nebraska may have been looking for a pass. And a nice call by Steve Watson with the run. 
39 yards, a career long run for number 27. We told you he loves to play against Nebraska. Trying to cut it to 14 to 10 now with Maris Gallium for the point after. And he's got it. So just when it looked like Nebraska had this thing in their hip pocket with a two touchdown lead, a field goal and now a touchdown by Johnson, and they're right back in the hunt. Well, the fullback's going to get a nice block on Watchard right over to the right side of the uh, offense. There's the fullback drum. Play's going to go right through here. Drum gets him, knocked him out. I think everybody was up there playing pass. Rogers, number 71, gets a nice block on the outside guy. That's cruising right that there. Is. And, and, and Bob, I think that's a play that in most cases that Carlos Polk playing at linebacker with a stop. I watched him on that play. He engaged the blocker. He was sliding to his left. There was somebody right there. But I think if that right leg had been stronger, he would have driven a little bit harder, been able to fight that. He could have slid right into that hole and stopped that play. But I think he just doesn't have the mobility yet in that leg. Well, Corlin Johnson, who we said at 135 yards last year, has almost 100 now with that touchdown run. And Swanee, and Swanee, if he doesn't, if he doesn't have that mobility in that leg, he really shouldn't be in there because he's hurting the team. Well, you're right. I mean, but he's an emotional leader. Yeah. He wants to play, sure. and that's probably why he's out there. Exactly. Uh, but his backup was doing a good job. I think maybe if they leave him out, see how this game goes, they'd be better off. Mariscal to kick. Joe Walker, three yards deep. Joe gets across the 20 out to about the 23 yard line. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by the Wide Track Grand Prix by Pontiac. Wider is better. The Husker Power 30,000 square foot <laughs> workout facility here. This is like a shrine, folks. Yeah, we wouldn't know, though. Well, Swanee knows all about we, that. We walk by it, yeah. Yeah, we walk by it. Swanee walks in it. <laughs> Started with their weight program back in the late 60s, and they have become really what everyone else models their facility after. Out to the 30 yard line goes Dan Alexander, who's been one of their weightlifting champions in the past. Swanee, you spent some time down there. Oh, absolutely. And uh, Dan Alexander is the only freshman ever to be lifter of the year, and that man, Kyle Vandenbosch, uh, he's the only football player to be two time lifter of the year. And that's that doesn't mean just football. That's all sports here in Nebraska. And they work out there hard and heavy, especially in the offseason. Second down and three. Alexander, one of those weightlifting champions, that last carry of now Eric Crouch. And he loses a couple. And Corey Massoni, the outside linebacker, makes the hit. Colorado, you can feel them coming into this game. They took them a while to wake up, maybe. Uh, they are against a opponent that's beaten them eight straight times but now they got the momentum shifted their way a little bit. Well as we mentioned this is a special game for these guys they moved this game to the end of the season this is the fifth time that it's been played on Thanksgiving Friday and uh, this is about all they've got to play for. A win here today would make their season. Gary Barnett said it's an honor to play the day after Thanksgiving and we don't want the game moved. We want to stay here. We want to keep playing these guys in this game. Here's Alexander. Got a nice block in front. I don't know if he got the first down. He got very close. Robbie Robinson, the safety, made the tackle. And the spot will dictate whether or not he got that first down. Looks a little short from here, but we'll wait and see. Right at the very end when Robinson came up to tackle him Alexander rolled over Robinson's body so his body really didn't land until right there and that might have been good enough a little bit extra. Ooh, we got it. Take a look from behind Hochstein and Schwab both pulling 65 as Schwab. Alexander reads the block. Now he, this guy was a this guy was a wrestling champion in high school Alexander he just kind of landed on the guy and just rolled over him. people forget he's 245 pounds yeah. and he bounces outside like that he got the first down by inches and now he goes off the left side for a couple coming up next more college football for you Lone Star rivals battle with Jamar Toombs and 
Terry Bowden online at ESPN.com. Keyword BCS. So Brent, Gary, Jack are waiting. How would you like to have Mac Brown's problem down there with two, two really good quarterbacks? Two really good quarterbacks. The young fellow will have the nod today. Second down and eight. And Crouch comes up thrown. And Eric throws caught by Davison. And Davison. Run right into the uh, drink tray down there. Got nine. <laughs> nice catch. Matt Davison started his career as everybody remembers with the big catches of freshman against Missouri that helped send that game into overtime and try to become the team leader in receptions three straight years out of Tecumseh, Nebraska. He's second in career receptions and yards. Uh, and Johnny Rogers. Yep. Back to the ground, the Huskers go out to the 48-yard line. Remember that day, Brent was calling that game. I remember we were watching it, looking back to November 8th to 97. Scott Frost with the throw off Shevin Wiggins and the dive, and Davison with the miracle reception that helped send that game to overtime. They went on and won it. Yeah, he said on. at that time he didn't know the magnitude. He said, I was just an 18, 19 year old kid. I didn't know it was that great yeah, a catch. Yeah, it didn't happen at the end of the year. They actually went on to win a share of the national That's championship. Right. And without that win, they wouldn't. Have. Yep. Second down along six. Crouch. And the keeper, Eric's got a big opening inside of 40. Puts a move on the safety, and he's down the sideline all the way to the 20 yard line. Best run of the day for Crouch. Goes 32 yards. No question. And I think one of the reasons why Eric has had some problems throwing in the last three or four ball games is because of all of the running that he does and all of the pounding that he takes. The option there, the man goes out to take the option. Now watch the way he gets hit here. I mean, this is pounding. You're going to ask quarterbacks and option guys like this to take this pounding when they get hit and then go back and try and throw the ball as well as a finesse quarterbacks do yeah, that, that don't happen. run? Yeah, you can't do that. At the 20, 65 yards now for Crouch. And Willie Miller, the fullback, got a yard. Jay Sean Sykes made the tackle. Eric Crouch talked with us about that shoulder injury. He says, you know, it happens, and I'm not going to use that as an excuse. But I'd never put any blame on that because I always expect myself, even with uh, you know a slight injury or something that has bothered me a lot, I still you know I still expect myself to make big plays and uh, to be able to fight through those things. I've always felt that way, uh, you know, about myself and the way that I go out and play. Everybody thinks of his speed, and he is a tough kid. He is. He is. He is tough, and he is quick. Here he is with a lead blocker in front on a second and nine, and he gets rattled down at the 15-yard line by Sykes again. You and ask, it's going to bring up a third down at about five. You ask all of the defensive coordinators from all the different teams that play Nebraska, and they'll tell you that Crouch is the key guy in this offense, not the eyebacks uh, and not the tight ends or not the offense. And the guy they mentioned is Crouch. The offense is built around Eric. Eric's going to take a timeout here, I think. And we'll take one as well with four minutes, three seconds remaining in the half. Good ball game going. Huskers lead by four. Nebraska leading by four and looking to add to that lead with 403 remaining in the half. Third down and five now at the Colorado 15 yard line. Crouch has done much of the damage to get him down this close. And now he's going to be dropped in his tracks, though. Nice play by Anwan Jones, the defensive end. And it's fourth down. Jones made a nice play there, recognizing that uh, Crouch still had the ball. Jones, one of the guys that came from Northwestern, spent yes. his freshman and sophomore seasons with yep. Gary Barnett there. Yep. And he didn't play in 98 or 99. <laughs> and they were hoping they could get maybe another year out of him next year on kind of a strange quirk, a problem that uh, was actually Colorado's with his grades, not with him. And uh, they're hoping they can get him back next year. He sat out two years, and he really needed to only sit out one. Right. A little undersized for a defensive end, but uh, playing well. Nebraska coming in ranked eighth in the country and in the all-important BCS poll that we've been talking about so much this season. You take a look at the top teams. They're also number eight in that category. Now Oklahoma alone on top, but that .51 between Florida State and Miami is what's caused all the stir in the right past here. couple of weeks. Yep. And of course, the winner of all of this after 
January 4th gets this baby to take back to their school the Sears National Championship trophy and that is one good looking trophy and right now it's Oklahoma that hopes they can keep their winning ways alive of course they've got to play again this weekend and then we'll see him in the Big 12 championship against Kansas State next week if they win those two they got a date there against it appears now either Florida State or Miami Josh Brown's going to try a field goal 32 yarder to try to stretch the Nebraska lead back to seven and I don't think so he missed it to the left he's had problems this year yes he has both kickers have had problems going this way today and so Colorado holds another missed field goal. talk about next Saturday night a week from Saturday night we'll be at Arrowhead Stadium and this is the matchup we'll see Oklahoma against Kansas State in the first time around 41 31 there's some of the numbers from that game look at this right here not bad huh? 374 yards passing against Kansas State the weather might be a little bit different though this time you got that right here's a counter Portland Johnson trying to get outside. He can't. Randy Stella stays over there and makes the stop. Kansas State defensively is ranked second in the nation, and Oklahoma offensively is ninth. So that right there should be another good battle. Clock winding down under three and a half minutes here. Colorado still with their full complement of timeouts. Oh, excuse me, they've got two. Second down and 11. Play action. Oaks throws on the run. Would have been a marvelous catch by Brandon Drum. He just couldn't hold it. That's a tough one over right over his shoulder for the fullback. And it's going to bring up third down and 11. With 305 left. So they've got to go 11 yards to get our Pacific Life first and 10. They're bringing us our first and 10 line today. And you can see where they've got to get. To pick up the first. And now the crowd getting into it for the Nebraska defense. They come up close, maybe with a blitz coming on Oaks. Polk will come on a delayed blitz. They want to throw a screen. They got a man wide open, Cortland Johnson. Johnson on his own, and he's got a first down. Nice tackle by Vanden wow. He might have been off to the races. He had nothing but uh, acres of land ahead of him. If Vanden Bosch doesn't catch him, he's got all kinds of room. Screen's going to be over to this side, right over here, and Vanden Bosch is going to catch him. Here's Vanden Bosch right there at number 83. Well, he had all kinds of room. You don't really see many screens on third and long because it's such an obvious call. The defense is always saying, watch the screen, watch the screen. <laughs> well, they watched it go for 16 yards. And on first down, it's Purify, the freshman out to the 40-yard line. And Colorado got plenty of time to work now. And still two timeouts to work with. The last time they played on Monday night, Gary Barnett knew that, but he is hanging the future of uh, the immediate future of the Colorado Buffaloes program on the kid and he's starting to answer the call here against Craig Bowles defense that's trying to slow him down with 127 left they got one timeout remaining and Oaks now has hit six different receivers and after that 0 for start all of a sudden he's 7 out of 15 so things are starting to improve for him but the key thing for him Colorado has rushed for 125 mm -hmm. yards Nebraska on and, and the average only gives up 105 yards per game. So anytime a, a quarterback can get a nice running game going to support your passing game, it makes it a lot easier. Carlos Polk kind of limping out there to that middle linebacker position. At the 31-yard line. First down, Colorado trailing by four. 127 left in the half. Facing the noise. Again, single coverage on the outside receivers. And the Nebraska defense. They're going to go with a swing pass the other way, and that one is just swallowed up by Jason Lohr. That had big play potential, too, but Lohr took that away in a hurry. 
Boy, there was nobody home on that backside, and so the defensive linemen for Nebraska have made some game-saving or touchdown-saving tackles. Lord, a defensive tackle, recognized that and went out, slid out, and made the play. Second down of 12. Oops, complete. Minardi's got it. Trying to battle for the first down. And he does a pretty good job to get it inside the 25-yard line to the 24. Juan Gross is there to bring him down. And 45 seconds left. One timeout left. Clock is running. Third down and three here. Huge third down up there. The think touchdown on this drive. And in and out of the hands of the intended receivers. So they're going to have to settle for a field goal attempt. And that hasn't been their strong suit necessarily so far today. <laughs> they've missed one. They've had one blocked. And they've made one. Mariscal did make his last one, though, a 32-yarder. And they're going to put him right about in that same category on this next one. Yeah, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see some shenanigans uh, on this one. Now, this one's deeper. This is going to be 42. If you've got a fake one and you've been working on it all year, this is the last game of the season. You've got to hold them back for anything. <laughs> Don't take it to the offseason with <laughs> That's you. right. Lined up from 42. And they'll kick it. Out of the way. And no good. Just outside. So they miss another opportunity to close the gap on Nebraska, and they still trail by four. Twenty-three seconds away from halftime, and John and Terry will take a closer look at the storied tradition of the Nebraska Blackshirts. Second game later on today. They start dressing them in red. Just about when they leave the hospital here in Lincoln. <laughs> it's kind of chilly coming to the ballpark this morning. It's about 20, 25 degrees. Supposed to get up to about 50 by end of game time. Beautiful day in Lincoln, Nebraska, the 239th consecutive sellout for the 39th consecutive winning season in this program's history. And they're going to take the lead to the locker room, the Cornhuskers, that is. Eric Crouch. Their quarterback has led them on offense. Carlos Polk, their defensive captains, led them on defense. But the young freshmen kept Colorado at least in the hunt. Halftime, Nebraska leading Colorado 14 to 10 is our halftime score. And the MSN halftime report is on deck. John Saunders and Terry Bowden. Gentlemen. Nebraska at home leading Colorado 14 to nothing. Colorado certainly had their opportunities though. In the first half, the first pass of the ball game picked off by Carlos Pope, and the senior captain takes it 39 yards for a touchdown. Mark Mariscal missed a 29 yard field goal, had a 37 yard field goal blocked. Chris Kelsey almost took that the distance. And then Craig Oaks threw an ill timed interception that was picked off near the end zone. And another missed field goal by Mariscal from 42 yards to end the first half. And I heard John and Terry talking about this stage of the season. You shouldn't have that many miscues on special teams. Quite frankly, both teams had trouble. Problems I, with that I, stage. I agree with that, and it's got to be disturbing for both of them. But the other side of the coin is you have a lot of films and a lot of game for the other side to go back and analyze how they can beat you on that. And Oaks had some opportunities. The young guy came in there in that last drive. He really looked pretty yeah, good. Yeah, he settled down. He settled down. I think he's going to feel good for the second half. Colorado feels like hey we really have a shot at winning this football game and Nebraska's defense I think in the first half played about like we expected them to play and Carlos Polk is the guy that led the way uh, Morgan Stanley Dean Witter halftime statistics dead even in rush yardage and uh, you would never think that that would be the case but remember Cortland Johnson had almost 100 yards by himself for Colorado they controlled the clock and uh, the turnovers even stats are uh, uh, you know awfully close I'd say the big the big surprise Colorado rushing for 125 yards. Yep. So hats off to the Nebraska seniors their final half coming up 27 of them. Randy Stella is going to bring the kick out from a yard deep and Stella the linebacker gets out to about the 25 yard line. Smiley, I know you had a chance to talk to Frank Solich. Yes, and he's first told me that Carlos Polk is fine. He said that Jamie Burrow's backup played very well when he got in there, but Carlos should be back in the ballgame. He felt that what he needs are individuals to make plays. They've had chances and opportunities on the offensive side of the ball, but the individuals haven't stepped up and says he wants them to come out and do that in the second half. So Nebraska will work from its own 25 yard line. 
And they'll go back to some power stuff here on first down, and it opens up for him, and Dan Alexander's into the secondary. Alexander across midfield, a nice step for him, and he's run out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Power football and 42 yards later, first down, Nebraska. It's good coaching when you go in at halftime and you come out the second half, and the first play you run is a successful play. It means your coaches have seen something. You come out, you run the plays early in the drive, and you make some uh, something happen. And uh, Nebraska well on its way to getting some points on the board on this first drive, third quarter. Longest run allowed by Colorado all, all year, and it's number 38, Alexander, who took it 42 yards. Now on the option. Eric Crouch. And Crouch, a late pitch. Fumble. Ball is loose. Colorado's got it. Second time today they've tried that pitch on that side, and the second time it's gone awry and they've lost it. The option with Nebraska is, is coming back to what happened last year to them when they had all those fumbles. And that is Crouch and the, is not good at pitching the football. He's great at keeping it, turning it up, and running for it. But when he turns to pitch it, he doesn't look at where the guy is. you got to find him a little bit before you pitch it. Two fumbles, both on pitches today. John Johnny, defensive lineman, comes up with a loose ball. That's Turner Gill on the right there, who was pretty good at pitching yes, the football. <laughs> so Colorado gets it back at the 27-yard line. From the shotgun, and they'll run out of the gun. And Cortland Johnson across the 32-yard line, and he's over 100 yards on the day for the second straight year against Nebraska. Van den Bosch uh, is getting a little bit tired of uh, all these turnovers by his offense. Yep. Uh, he's, you know, he's been in on a lot of tackles, a lot of plays. And that, uh, Remember last year against Colorado, five times they put it on the turf there at Folsom Field, and uh, two today. Yep. Colorado's been one of the teams they've really struggled holding out of the football against. Second down and a long five at the 32-yard line. Javon Green's been quiet. He's the motion man into a slot. And they're going to go to him across the middle and got a first down out near the 40-yard line. Now this is the only the second pass they've thrown to Javon Green today in his first reception. Colorado's virtually been living in Nebraska's territory today. In fact, they started several drives in Nebraska territory and didn't have anything to show for it the first three times. Missed field goal, blocked field goal, interception, and then finally got the touchdown. Yep. Good graphic there. Out to the 40-yard line. Their own 40 now with a first down. And it's Portland Johnson, and Johnson's got the corner. Portland Johnson having a big day, and now he's right back in Nebraska territory. 14 more yards. And Cortland Johnson closing in on what he did last year when he had 125, and he's right around 117 on the afternoon today. Yeah, and you got to mention the two offensive linemen that was uh, escorting him around the corner. Gerard, number 65. Rogers is 71. Big Rogers, 330 pounds. We talk about the Nebraska offensive lineman. You got to give it a little bit of credit there to number 71, Victor Rogers. Remember, he was shaken up in the first half, so he's back out there and playing well. Helped his team to a first down at the 46-yard line. Again, Green across the field in motion. Oaks pumps once. Now fires in I think a little miscommunication there. It looked like he wanted to pump and go deep. And Cedric Cormier broke his pattern off. Swanee? Swanee, I know you talked to Gary Barnett about his quarterback. I certainly did, and uh, he just said that Craig Oaks is just a little t too keyed up, a little too excited about playing this ball game, and, and he said it's been this way the entire week. He said the whole week he's been geared up to try and play this game to make something happen. He just needs to settle him down and try and let some other people do some things before he calls upon Craig to make the big play. He's got a second down here. He'll keep it on the ground. Purify. Nice little sidestep by Purify, and he keeps weaving his way inside the 40. And got eight yards to the 38. Vandenbosch was unblocked. You know, in the design of the play, you don't need the blocking, but he's so quick that Purify just had to say, wait a minute. Purify reads the block of the tackle going down inside, so he goes down. Purify saw him coming and just stopped and let him go. <laughs> Vandenbosch has been involved today, hasn't he? He's not the prototype size for a defensive end, but he's got one of those motors they talk about that's uh, got a Hemi engine in it. And he never keeps coming. 
Johnson. And hit right when he got near the first down marker. Scott Shanley, the linebacker, made the stop. This one might be close enough to look at. Colorado has run 44 total plays today. 28 of those plays have been run in Nebraska territory. You'd think they'd have a huge lead with that kind of statistic, but missed field goals, missed blocking assignments, and credit and the Nebraska defense, too. And an interception at the goal line, the Nebraska goal line. So let's see if he did get it. Ooh, boy. That one's about an inch. That's, uh, that's just the length of the clip on the links. Uh, you got to go for it because you're not going to kick it. You're not your field goal kicker has not been doing well. And what would a punt get you? Not much if you kicked it in the end zone. Right. Only gained 16 yards. That's right. And with Nebraska's offense, it doesn't mean much anyway. They can they can eat up yardage like uh, like mad. So fourth down at a clip of a chain. I'd try my cadence first if I had a stuttered cadence. Straight ahead, quarterback has to bounce outside. His second effort got it for him. He didn't have it the first time, I can guarantee you he that. He came bouncing way back, didn't he? So Oaks hits the line, bounces around, and then squirted off that left side for the first down. Watch as Oaks is going to bounce back. He tries the right side, and that's a Walker 25 that knocks him back. And he said, well, if I can't get it on the right, I'll go around the left. Now they're shaking up offensive lineman Justin Bates being helped off. This is not a very uh, deep as far as depth offensive line. Gary was telling me uh, this week that one of the things when he got here is they didn't have a, a good supply of offensive linemen. And with Bates out, Hage comes in there, and Hage is a true freshman. Yeah. But it is a first down, Colorado. Oaks fires. Minardi couldn't hold it. Juan Gross out there, number five on the corner, was covering. Tonight only, two guys and a girl and Norm are back to back with all new episodes, and we guarantee you'll get some laughs tonight starting 8 o'clock, 7 central on ABC. The line of scrimmage, the 35 yard line, trailing 14 to 10. The Colorado Buffaloes right back where they've spent a lot of this game in Nebraska territory, but not a lot to show for it. And it's Oaks had a keeper off the fake draw, and he bounces his way near the 30, where it's going to be third down and a long five, almost six. Oaks doing a nice job of avoiding a loss. First, Stella, 34, is going to have a shot at him. And then Vandenbosch, 83. He does a nice job to get back to the line of scrimmage or gain a yard or two. And finally, Kelsey paced him there. 15 hard earned yards so far on the seven times that he's been handling the ball. Here's another big third down. That's a blitz right here. Quick throw on a slant. Got his man. First down, and it's McCready like down to the 15-yard line. I like that. If you see a blitz, throw in the direction of the blitz. That will usually get it out of. If... That'll get it out for you. McCready's the guy that said this is our one-game season against Nebraska. Yeah, here's the blitzer, and here's the slant coming in from this side over here. Nice that job. That may be on the line. Yeah. Because he had had some opening down there. They, they weren't bumping, they weren't pressing on the ride receivers, and there wasn't that extra man out there. Three wide out group for Oaks on first down at the Nebraska 15. Javon Green in motion. And here's a counter to Johnson. And Cortland Johnson almost got to the end zone. Ball came loose. Nebraska covers it. Now was the ball dead? Yes, it was. The field judge has already come over and made the call. I think that's a good call. Foolishly, Johnson was reaching the ball out to try and score, and when it hit the ground, it came out. But, uh, you know, I don't blame him, I guess. You want a touchdown so badly. Is, yeah. But uh, you got you to take care of the football. Knee is, knee is down. He's down. Great yeah. look at it right there. And yeah. His elbow hits, and then yeah. the ball comes loose. Good job, guys. So it is first and goal. Colorado at the Nebraska two-yard line. Trying to take the lead for the first time today. 
Portland Johnson. Touchdown, Colorado. And they are in the lead. Ball carried by number 27, Portland Johnson. Johnson. Carlos Pope, the, the middle linebacker, is not his old self. I think that injury is really affecting him. Corlin Johnson, the guy that scored, has not gotten back up yet. Took it in from two yards, his second touchdown of the day. Here's another look at the score. Well, I don't know what, uh, don't I don't know where the injury yeah, would he come did, he in He looked there. like when he was laying there on the ground, like he wasn't bothered by anything. Bit woozy. Maybe somebody rolled over on his ankle. Oh, maybe he's got a problem with a contact or something. At any rate, he's coming out with another touchdown and a lead for his team. Portland Johnson Jr. out of St. Louis. Big game last year and another one here today so far. Mariscal now to try to give Colorado a three point advantage. Ooh, and he does. Nothing is easy. No, with, it's not. With the field goals and the extra points today. So 9:57, and the folks that made the trip from Boulder enjoying themselves right now. Colorado in front. Just under 10 minutes left, third quarter. 17-14 now. On a 73-yard march, a little over four and a half minutes, and 17 straight points. And as our A statistician Pat McGrath just pointed out during the break. Does this one eerily look a little bit like Oklahoma? Remember 14 nothing Nebraska at the end of one quarter. Yep. And Oklahoma comes back to win that one. This one's got the makings of the same type of thing only with not as big a stakes at hand from the four is Walker. And Joe goes out to about the 25 yard line and that's where Nebraska is going to have to work from behind for the first time today. Here's our Aflac trivia question this week. How many players, this is our Thanksgiving theme, folks. <laughs> How many players on these teams weigh 300 pounds or more? Just take a guess. Just take a random thought crack at it, and we'll have the answer for you in a few minutes. There's one of them. <laughs> There's a 300 pounder. <laughs> There's another. <laughs> Nebraska's got some up front. And Alexander, no gain on that play. Well, one of the things that will stop an offensive drive are fumbles, and this is one fumble on the first possession of the game. Crouch pitches it again. Another fumble. Both fumbles on option tosses. Both take away from drives. Nebraska's had the ball seven possessions, and two of them have been stopped because of the fumbles. That first fumble didn't hurt him. The second one cost him a touchdown. Crouch straight drop this time. Plenty of time to throw. Kind of a knuckleball incomplete. Intended for Davison. Uh, Bob and Brad, it, it, if, if you think back about those two fumbles we just saw, the position between the quarterback and the trailing back both were very, very different. Uh, and I think what Eric Crouch ends up doing is the backs think he's going to run with the football. At the last minute, his pitch is very short, very quick, and I don't, I don't know that they think he's going to get the ball. They're going to get the ball because they anticipate him running with it so often in that situation. And Eric is readily admitted to us that he hopes to make a big play by some of those late pitches by taking the shot at the very last moment. Today, with a drop back this time, and that time he threw a shot to Davison for the first down. Good pitch and catch there. This is what Nebraska, Colorado wants to get Nebraska into is third and long, where you've got to get Crouch back in shotgun throwing the football. Nicely done. That's a perfect throw there. Good pass protection from a line that's not usually to pass protect a lot. And they pick up 15 on a third and 10. So now first down at the 40. And he drops back, wants to throw again. Sideline ball. Davison got tangled up over there with Donald Strickland. It's a good call because that's what he wanted. He wanted a a deep pass to uh, Davidson and when he wasn't there he just threw it out of bounds. A play when Colorado I'm sure was thinking option or run after they picked up the first down. A little bit of an element of surprise there but uh, it comes up incomplete. So second and ten 
at the 40. Again, Crouch from the gun. With three wideouts. And he'll keep it on a quarterback draw. And it opens up for him. Eric Crouch, first down into Colorado territory at the 47-yard line. That's where he can kill you. Watch the offensive line on this one. Here's the uh, the, the uh, right guard. He watches he's going to slide and come around and make the make the block. That's Finotti. He's 300 pounds right here. The block fullback blocks there and the quarterback runs the quarterback draw right up the middle. Finotti, the 335 pounder. Good feet. still isn't 19 years old. Yeah. Do you believe that? Here's a run off the left side and a pickup only of about a yard. Finotti will turn 19 tomorrow. Uh, day after tomorrow, isn't it? The 26th? 26th. Is today the 25th? <laughs> I have yeah. no idea. No, it's, anyway, it isn't. his birthday is coming up in a day or so, and he's a sophomore already. He's going to end up being a senior that'll be 20. He'll be in the National Football League by the time he's 20. Mm -hmm. So he plays at, at, at Nebraska. Last year he was 17 during the season. Now he's 18 during the season. 19 and 20 a senior year. He'll be around a long time. And he's a good one. Why did he start so soon? I have no idea. Here's Crouch. Got a man wide open and he got him. His tight end, John Bowling. And he goes bowling for the marker. Don't forget, coming up Monday night, it'll be Brett Favre and the Packers trying to stay in a wild card hunt in the NFL. In the NFC, they'll take on the Carolina Panthers in Charlotte. That's 9 o'clock on Monday night. And on Sunday night on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern, it's the Giants traveling to Phoenix to take on the Cardinals. A couple good NFL games coming up this weekend on ESPN and on ABC. Third and short. And first down run by Alexander. Michael Lewis made the tackle, but Big Dan goes to the 33-yard line for the first down. Talk about Nebraska offensively. You talk about basically two things. One, the power game, which you're seeing on this drive, and the option game, which is the wide stuff. The option game you're having a little problem with, so you go back inside and let those offensive linemen, Riola and Hochstein, 55, and the other guys, use their power straight ahead. Here's the stretch. Alexander broke through, still on his feet. And the big fellas all the way to the 14-yard line. Remember, he did this last year against Colorado. He scored the first time he touched it. And then when they desperately needed him to run over some people, in the overtime session, he did it again. Miller gets a good block, number 15. Alexander, as we mentioned earlier, he was a high school wrestling champion, and he's a tailback for Nebraska, weighing 245 pounds. Two yards shy of the century mark, and he won't get it on that carry. He's still wrestling around with him. He was a heavyweight wrestling champion. That's good enough size. <laughs> he's got the legs for it. Normally those guys play yeah, nose tackle. <laughs> the defense. They normally don't run as fast as he does. No, that's true. He's pretty quick, and uh, uh, you know we told this story before, but you know Carlos Polk likes to play a few games, and he and Dan Alexander got into a little wrestling match. Now both of them say that they won. Right. Okay. They argue about that point. <laughs> I have a feeling, I have a sneaky suspicion that uh, Alexander may have gotten the best of him. Now you have to huh. deal with Carlos. I know. I'll yeah. talk to him later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Buckhalter in there now is the eye back. <laughs> straight up the middle and he might have it first and goal. It looks like it. Needed to get to the two for the first down. They get Alexander out of there and Buckholder rips one off. Nebraska doing a nice job of taking the ball deep in their own territory and answering when they went behind by Colorado. They've taken the ball all the way down inside the five yard line. Unless they use it here with Eric Crouch now with a first and goal, I think maybe they'll put the option to bed for the day. Because right now what they're doing is working pretty well. Well, that was one of the things on the option that Colorado wanted to do is, is force him to pitch it. Here is the option keeper, though, and Crouch just yeah. dances in. Yeah. They want to get the ball out of his hands, and they didn't do it that time. Two-yard touchdown by Eric Crouch, his second on the ground today in his 19th of the season. And Nebraska's back in front. 
That was a good looking drive. It was a great drive because it answered when Colorado goes ahead of you, they come right back and answer. Josh Brown for the point after. And it's good. With five minutes and 39 seconds remaining in the third quarter. A good one, Bruin and Lincoln. The Huskers back in front by four. We did a good job both throwing and running on the drive, and Dan Alexander did a big chunk of it, so did Buck Holder. Now Colorado with the kickoff for Mir. And he gets out across the 20 out to about the 23-yard line. We asked you earlier how many players on these teams weigh 300 or more pounds. That was our Aflac trivia question. That's the answer. Wow. Nebraska has 13. Colorado has five. So the big eaters go to the corn fed <laughs> Huskers and that's just that's one plate full yesterday of, uh -huh. of the linemen. And that was his first plate. Yeah. That was that Yours was didn't even look that bad that, last night. Well, <laughs> well talk about your play. <laughs> Here's a counter pitch. And only about a yard. Des Moines Adams made the stop. And Bobby Purify is in there right now at the tailback spot. The big question was whether we'd see Cortland Johnson after scoring that last touchdown. Swanee, I know he's had a uh, problem all year long with turf toe, and I guess that's kind of cropped up on him again. And that's right. When he was tackled face down, you know, you just imagine his toes are straight down to the ground, and that forces a big toe back. It's his right foot, and it's a turf toe is a common term we've used for a dislocated toe. It's hard to play football when you have that injury. Ask your old buddy Jack Lambert, huh? Here's Johnson off play action down the middle and got Minardi and that's a first down good throw. Yeah the difference of Craig Oates in the second half as to oppose the starting the game settle down very calm taking things as they come. Take a look from behind the quarterback little roll receivers going to come from the right side. Throws it around that's federal number yep. nine right on the money. You can even see his demeanor when he looks to the sideline for the play now that he is starting to see everything a little bit more slow motion. <laughs> hey, this is, he hadn't been anything like this. Yeah. There were no high school games this, like this one. This isn't Fairview High School. <laughs> this is Memorial Stadium. Oh. Lincoln, he's on Tom Osborne Field for crying out loud. <laughs> and he's going to throw a fade down the left sideline. Incomplete. Broken up. Erwin Sweeney on Minardi out there. and Does a nice job to break it up. Single coverage on the outside. Minority is 6 2. Sweeney's about the same size. Just a good play by Sweeney, who had that interception in the first half at the goal line. Second down and 10. Colorado trailing by four. A little over four left in the third quarter. And it's purified. Banded Bosch went low, knocked him off his pins. What a game this guy's had. He really is. I mean, he was blocked way out on the end and came all the way back to the inside to make the play. He's a three time academic All Big 12 performer. He's going to graduate next spring. Got about a 3.83 going. He looks like a, a big ugly, but he's smart. And he can really play the game. If he lets some hair grow on that yeah. bald head of his. He's got that pro wrestler <laughs> thing going yeah. on. Down the middle, pass complete. First down and then some, and it's Graham the tight end. And he rambles into Nebraska territory again inside the 48-yard line. On a third and seven, they got 14 more. Yeah. Nice play, well designed. Shanley the linebacker. Here's Graham the tight end. He's just going to come across the field. Linebacker's going to be right on him, but right there, he's got him beat by a step. Look out, everything else is cleared out. Nice call, well designed play. Cortland Johnson is checked back in for Colorado. And Oaks wisely takes a knee as John Clanton fell into the neutral zone. It appears it's going to be offsides on Nebraska. Oh, 
Offside on the defense. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. There's a call by Terry Turling. What do you figure Terry's going to do when he quits refing? What's he going to do on Saturdays? What I don't know. What do old old ref old retired referees do? I don't know. They just still make calls around the house, I guess. <laughs> I <don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> They're throwing flags I around the living room. I bet they don't make as many calls as they do you on Saturday right. afternoon. <laughs> I bet you Mrs. Terry makes all the calls at home. <laughs> first and five. Johnson weaving his way for a first down run again. Johnson, the ball carrier. And Cortland Johnson, well over the 100 yard mark today, slapping Joe Walker on the helmet, who helps him up. Got a season high, 139 yards. Reminder near the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Portland certainly figuring in that mix right now the way he's been playing as his team another first down football just inside the Cornhusker 37 yard line 243 left third quarter Colorado trailing but threatening again Johnson left side Brought down at the 31 Clint Finley put the hit on him there Johnson though that offensive line of Colorado is doing a nice job and he's getting five yards before you know it. They are Ashworth Bates Gray Gerald and uh, Rogers Gerard excuse me and Rogers 180 190 yards now rushing where Nebraska only was giving up 105 on the season per game. That's the key stat right there because it's giving the young freshman quarterback the, the feeling that he doesn't have to do it all. Said Nebraska in the top 40 in the country in that category. Nice play fake by Oaks. Comes up throwing. Got his man McCready. He stretches out to the 22. And that's another first, first down. down. First down conversion. Just convert third downs into, into first downs. You know the last two drives, Nebraska did what they do best. Right now, Colorado's doing what they've done best in their wins this year. Yeah. And that's doing it a little bit on the ground, chipping away, and then throwing off play action. See a nice touch. Uh, Oaks had on that football. Yeah, we're starting to see what Early. the coaches exactly. talk to us yeah. about this said, week now. If you weren't with us at the start, Gary Barnett said this kid's our best football player. You know, so we got to play. He's a true freshman at quarterback. Purify, another freshman, goes down for a loss. Jason Lohr and Jeremy Selecta there, but it was Chad, uh, Chris Kelsey rather that submarined in there that forced that play. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by. Chevy Silverado. It's not just any truck. It's the truck. Sears and the Sears National Champion Football Trophy. Quest, the communications to change everything. And FedEx. FedEx, be absolutely sure. You can even FedEx something from out there in the prairie from that barn. It'll get there the next day. There you go. Carlos Polk still in there on a bad knee. Has a touchdown defensively today. And he's stalking behind that defensive line on second and 12. Nice hit put on by Joe Walker on uh, Roman Hollowell. Short gain on the play. Got a couple. Hollowell may be the smallest player on the field. He's 5'6", 160. With the first name like Roman, he seems bigger. <laughs> but he's not very big. He is dangerous as a punt returner. Third down at seven. This is a huge play for both teams in the waiting moments of the third quarter. Oaks pumps. Now comes across the middle. Got McCready again. And it's a first down inside the 10 yard line. First half, he would have thrown that ball the first time he pumped it, but this time he waited till the guy got in inside. And you can see Colorado feeling it on this drive again. No. Uh -oh. See, he's throwing around the linebacker. He was ready to throw it. There was a, a red shirt there, so he waited till the McCready, the wide receiver, slid inside and threw it inside. And he's holding up four fingers, saying maybe the fourth quarter will be ours. We'll find out. It's 21-17 at the end of three. An ABC Sports presentation of college football continues after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Didn't we tell you a couple hours ago, Nebraska and Colorado always play it tight the day after Thanksgiving. We enter the fourth quarter. It's 21-17, eighth-ranked Nebraska. But Colorado's chewed up 69 more yards over five and a half minutes. The 12th play of the drive is coming up, and they've got it first and goal at the eight-yard line. They dominated 
the third quarter as far as time of possession. Nice play fake by Oaks. Throws on the run. Got it to his man at the five-yard line. Scott Nemeth, the fullback, knocked out of bounds over there. Now Stella, Randy Stella, doing a nice job of staying with his man. You mentioned time of possession in that third quarter. Let's take a look at the uh, pass, the completion, and the coverage. Colorado had it over 10 minutes in that third quarter. Compared to like Nebraska, like four minutes and 45 seconds. This is the third straight drive that Colorado's had at least 11 plays or more. Here's the toss, Cortland Johnson. He's close. And about the one foot line. Boy, does he run north and south Absolutely. or what? Absolutely. There's no wasted motion yeah. by him. He's only 5'9, about 205. And 149 yards for him. As he got it that close. Great effort. And I'd be the most shocked person in the stadium if he doesn't get another crack at it. Of course, Nebraska is thinking that as well. Third and goal. He'll get another shot. Up over the top. He got there. Touchdown. Portland Johnson, 150 yards and three touchdowns on the day. Colorado has dominated in the second half. And it's dominant on the ground. It's with almost, almost 200 yards rushing now for Colorado against Nebraska. Mark Maris Gallant for the point after. Bad snap, but he got it down, and a kick is tucked inside the left just, upright. Just inside. But it's Cortland Johnson, the man of the day, 150 yards, three touchdowns. Gary Barnett enjoying it. Colorado leads. tackling very well right now and that led to a 77 yard drive a 14 play march a good looking drive by Colorado to regain the lead what a great drive that was two possessions for Colorado in the second half two touchdowns the freshman Oaks five different receivers on that six out of seven performance on that drive here's Joe Walker got the corner and Walker cuts back inside and got near the 30 and the ball might be loose on the bottom of that pile wait a minute might have been a late fumble Colorado says they've got it. It's going to take a little while to unpile. Yeah, right maybe, now, maybe changing hands right now, even as we speak. Mm -hmm. They got a mess down there. It's going to be Nebraska football. They still don't have the pile up, but they got the referee pointing in the direction of the Cornhuskers. So Nebraska maybe dodged a little bit of a problem there. That certainly would have given Colorado a great opportunity. Oh, they already lead by three with 14 minutes left. Frank Solich on the sideline and Congressman Tom Osborne in the booth. The votes are in in Nebraska. It was only 82 percent for Tom <laughs> to get into Congress. He's probably saying what happened to the other 18 percent. Right. They were Colorado fans maybe. I don't know. Here's Eric Crouch. On the keeper. Oh, what a form tackle that was by Michael Lewis. Lewis, probably the best defensive player Colorado's got, an all Big 12 performer at yep. safety. Leading tackler. Dr. Tom is uh, taking a look at this play inside. Crouch using his running ability and a great hit. But Dr. Tom had pretty much everything his own way when he was a head coach here in Lincoln. When he goes to Washington, He's going, to, he's going to learn a whole new uh, way of uh, give and take. Blitz is going to take on a whole different connotation. Straight ahead. Buckhalter. And he might have the first down, I think. Rayshon Sykes made the tackle. There, there have been four possessions in the second half. Two by Nebraska, two by Colorado. Three of the four possessions have led to touchdowns. The other one was a fumble on the option by, by Nebraska. So the defenses hasn't stopped anybody here in the second half. I think one of the reasons why Nebraska had a very successful drive the last time out, Bob, 
was that they had a much better passing game. They were able to complete a third and long, a first down pass. And once you get a defense thinking more about just one aspect of your offense, then you've got a real chance to, to go after them, make some things happen, much like uh, uh, Colorado has done, mixing the run and the pass against the Nebraska defense. Hey, what they might pass right here, they just requested a new football. <laughs> Crouch was two of four uh, on the last drive. It led to that touchdown and picked up a crucial third down conversion. At the 39 yard line, first down, Cornhuskers. They've got a three wide out set. Bobby Newcomb in motion. They play fake the end around. Crouch in trouble. Wide open tight end. Wistrom. Wistrom down the sideline. New football in hand all the way to the 36 yard line. There you go, partner. Andy Peak knocked him out. Wistrom's first catch couldn't have come at a better time and couldn't have been a bigger one. A pickup of 26. Well, the reverse is going to come back this way, but here's Wistrom. He's just going to slide out over here after he gets the uh, fake done. Now he blocks a little bit. Wistrom, look how wide open he is right there. Nobody within eight yards of him on either side. So first down, Cornhuskers at the Buffaloes, 36. Crouch in trouble is going to lose a yard or two. Nice play defensively by Tyler Brayton. A defensive end. By Tyler Brayton. And that'll bring up second down and long. 1240 left in the football game. The Huskers trailing by three. To look at Bobby Newcomb. They've been faking. He's been a decoy a couple times on reverses. And fake reverses, I should say. Second down and 12. Crouch from the gun, quarterback draw. Looks for room and runs smack dab into a fired up Buffalo defense. Brandon, uh, Bannon and Brayton again combined on the hit. Brayton, a big sophomore, a couple big plays here. So now it's bringing up third and 12. And 12 yards away is our first and 10 presented by Quest. You see the line they've got to reach is down at the 26 yard line. And this is one of those funny spots where it might be two down territory because they can't kick a field goal this long and a punt wouldn't do them much good. Third down and 12. We'll they find come. out. Quick slant. Complete. And a penalty marker. I think we're going to have roughing the passer maybe on Jay Sean Sykes. The pass well short of the first down. Crouch is still on his backside. Eric just got up now. Sykes was the guy that applied the pressure. And we'll get the call in a sec. Number seven right up the gut. Nobody touches Ooh. him. Man. Helmet right under the chin. Yeah, that's helmet to helmet. And that's there's no rule in college, but rubbing the passer. That's about 15,000 bucks in the NFL. Yeah, that's right. And I think the NFL has done a nice thing, of, a nice job of, of cutting back some of the violence. Uh, and I think eventually the college game will do that also because that, like you say, that hit would have been uh, uh, flagged and fined in the NFL. Let's watch that one real time one more time. Helmet to helmet. Now, you don't have to do that. The game is violent enough. I mean, you, he, may not, down. he may not have been able to pull himself off, but you didn't have to hit him like that. Now the give, Buck Calder dancing his way down to about the 16-yard line. There's 11 minutes left in this game, but something that very rarely occurs, the Huskers are trailing by three, and something that almost never happens, could they lose at home to an unranked team? Yeah. And on the other, other side of the uh, ledger, Colorado has beaten a ranked team for 13 years in a row. But they have not beaten one this year. Second down along seven. Here's the toss. Buck Alders in an end around. Oh, they fake it. He's going to keep it. He got the corner. Bumped out of bounds before he got to the first down marker by Phil Jackson. And a penalty marker on this play as well. That one thrown in the general vicinity of holding. Because of where he turned that corner, he might have had a little help with a turn signal out there in front of him. 
Good call, partner. There it is. And that negates a good run that got it down to the 10 yard line. Frank Solich has lost only one game against an unranked team. That was Texas. And look at the record in the last 13 years for Nebraska at home. 80 wins, only three losses. Mm -hmm. So they're not usually in a spot where no. they're behind, and they're very seldom in a spot when they're behind at the end of the game. Sir, for one of those losses, University of Washington came here and beat them, and the fans of Nebraska, you got to say, I think the fans of Nebraska are the best fans yes, of all, they are. all of college football because at the end of that game, when the Washington Huskies went off that field, the they fans, got an ovation. They, they pulled them, yeah, exactly. The three losses were to Colorado in 90, Washington in 91, and Texas in 98. It don't happen often, folks. Here's a throwback screen. And the caller in the open field inside the 20. Down to the 10. He's got it first and goal, Nebraska. Well designed. And Riola and company making a statement out there as their lead blockers. Well, here it is. He's going to roll this way. Here's the, the screen man right here. He's going to slide out to the top of the screen. You roll this way, get everybody coming. Now look what you got. You got three guys out in front of the block for you. Going to cut back inside of one of them and almost get it all the way down. Nebraska first and goal at the Colorado five. Trailing by three in the fourth quarter. Straight ahead the fullback Davies and he stood up right at the line of scrimmage. Justin Bannon. Number 97 on the bottom of that pile. You know, Buckhalter has been in there on this drive and he's had some pretty good runs and one of the reasons why I like him in this situation is that he's a little shiftier runner than Dan Alexander. Dan Alexander, former fullback, he'll bowl you over, big upper body guy, he'll give you a hard stiff arm, but Buckhalter will make you miss, a little niftier dancing along the sidelines, give you more play as an inside runner. And the officials Stop play to remark the football. Yep. Nebraska has had some problems with the option with the pitch. Does uh, Solich call it down here in this situation? Three tight end set. Davies the fullback. Buck Alder the tail. Here's the keeper by Crouch trying to get to the corner. Broke one tackle and he's run out of bounds. Nice job stretching that out. Strickland's going to get credit for the tackle, but Phil Jackson made the play. Exactly. That's a good defensive, a team defense. Everybody did their job, slid everybody to the outside. And this was a keeper all the way. This was a quarterback design sweep. Saw that hit on Jackson, by Jackson on Crouch. And then Strickland did the rest. Eric got it to the three-yard line. And Lewis, their safety, shaken up apparently. We need him out there. Third down and goal. Nebraska. There's what they've done today in the red zone. Crouch drops back and throws. Had a man wide open and he one hopped it into the corner. He had him wide open. Nobody around Wistrom and Crouch threw a bad ball. Yeah, he did. No question about it. Here's Westrom here. He's just going to slide out here. He's going to fake and just get back into the uh, backfield. He hurried that a little bit, didn't yeah, he, Bob? He did. He did. He didn't have to because look how wide Westrom is is open. I, you know what I'm. I, you know what I think. I think Crouch. In practice, you always have to throw that quickly, and he probably said it, it didn't look. He just came out. He said, "I got to throw it quick, and I'm going for it." Going for the tie. And it's good. They're telling me now from the truck that that pass was deflected a little bit that we could not see. They did get the three, though. The seven was oh so close, or could have been. But the pass by Crouch was tipped just a bit. They'll have to settle for the tie. High game. Jay Sean Sykes had that late hit on Eric Crouch. Not a late hit, but a helmet to helmet hit. A roughing the quarterback penalty kept the 69 yard drive for Nebraska alive. They have to settle for a field goal and we're even at 24 as the kick sails out of bounds. Colorado will work from the 35 yard line as the penalty markers fly. Out comes the Nebraska defense now. Their job in front of them to stop Colorado, give their offense a chance to get it back and win it. Things are heating up though. Cortland Johnson, three touchdowns today. The hitting is hard. The score is tied. 
Certainly not a game of leftovers, is it? 24 24, <laughs> 9 18 left. And Colorado's got a first down at its own 35 yard line. The freshman quarterback trying to engineer an upset in his first trip in here as a player. And the other freshman, Purify, gets about a yard, and that's it. With 9-12 left in the ballgame, let's check in with John Saunders in New York. John, and happy holidays to you and Terry. We have a good chance to talk to you. Here's a first down throw. Green in the open field. Javon Green spinning his way into Nebraska territory. That was on a second down, I should say, and they got 16 yards. To look at uh, Colorado last three possessions. Look at the number of plays right here. Man. And two touchdowns right over here. Sometimes you can go a whole half and not that have, have that many plays. Well, the defense is kind of taken away any big plays, but the offenses in the second half have just marched it right down and scored on four or five possessions. Oaks has hit his last six passes. He's throwing another one. Throwing down the sideline. Perfectly thrown to Minardi, but he couldn't hold it. And Minardi's shaking up on the play. I thought he was going to haul that thing in. It looked like in, an, in the effort to try and catch that ball, when he hit the ground or from stretching out, you know, he caught that ball. Did he catch it? He caught he it. He did catch he it. He caught it. Stretches out. Yeah. He did make the catch. I think he hurt his left shoulder. He catches wow, the ball. Catch. Now watch him hit on his left Very shoulder. Call. I couldn't see it. Went down hard and then got up holding either his shoulder or his sternum. Yeah. We'll try to check on him, but he sure got a big catch for his offense. Tied at 24, 8 11 remaining in the ball game. Here comes the freshman, Craig Oaks. Came to this stadium one time with his dad in 96 at age 15 to watch a game because he thought Coy Detmer and the Buffaloes could pull off an upset. Here he is four years later trying to do it himself. And Cortland Johnson goes down a loss of about a half yard on the play. Jason Lohr in on the stop. Less than eight minutes remaining in the ball game. And here's here's a guy Bob that. Uh, he says the first time he ever remembers this series was in 86 watching a game. That was the first time Bill McCartney was able to pull off an upset in Nebraska. He's, he's in the thick of it right now. He, he took about a quarter and a half to really get going, but I'm very impressed with him. He is into the flow of it. He has calmed down. He is no longer a true freshman quarterback. Here he is off play fake. Wants to throw back a screen. Incomplete. Had to get out of the way. One of his linemen as Carlos Pope blew that thing up along with the pressure from Vandenbosch. Portland Johnson was the intended receiver. Had they been able to get it to him, he had a convoy out there. You talk about making a quick decision. When he turned around and saw the thing had blown up, there were red shirts out there, Nebraska defensive players. He just overthrew everybody and just got rid of the sack. I'll tell you, Vandenbosch is uh, a really fine example of not just a guy who's dedicated to the game and the school. You talked about his great schoolwork, but he is also a scholar recipient of the National Football Foundation Hall of Fame, an $18,000 postgraduate scholarship. He is playing a whale of a game. Here's a throw incomplete intended for Minardi, who had checked back in there after that sensational catch, and Dewan Gross broke it up. Gonna go with the field goal. Yep. Minardi, single coverage out on Gross, a little slant. A little bit behind him and a little late. Timing just not right. So it's Mark Mariscal who's had some trouble today. He missed a potential game winner from 41 yards against USC. He's going to try a 41 yarder here to put his team in front late in the fourth quarter. And it's blocked. And it's Kelsey who's got it. Nebraska's blocked another one. Graver blocked it. Kelsey covered it. side right here here's Craver he just got it there's two guys rushing to that side right there look at this guy right here he's got to block both of them you can't do it very well one of them gets in there it's Craver on the outside the snap may have been a little tight 
Minardi tried to straighten it out, but it was too late. Craver, who's a great kick blocker, and has returned a couple punts for touchdowns this year, and now it's Buckhalter into the open field, and Carl Buckhalter's got a first down Nebraska. We approach seven minutes, and here come the Cornhuskers. Special teams will kill you. You better be strong on special teams, or you're not going to win many ball games, or not many big ball games. Colorado could have a nine-point lead in this game were it not for their unspecial teams. And now Nebraska may be thinking they've got the Buffs right where they want them. They're in their territory. There's seven minutes left in the game. Let's see if we go to power Nebraska football to try to win this. Straight ahead. Buckholder now kicks it outside. Got the corner. Whew. Wicked hit out there. Phil Jackson had to go low, and Buckholder went right over the You're top. Right. Buckholder was going to hit whoever came out. He didn't care about gaining any more yardage. He was lowering his shoulder. And Jackson went low to preserve his life. Jackson was putting on a red light, and Buckholder <laughs> just ran the light. Yeah. Here comes Jackson. He says, Oh no, I'm coming low. Uh, I'll give it up. 69 yards for Buckholder. He got 17 there. First down. Now it's Miller. And Jay Sean Sykes has to bulldog him down at the 25 yard line. Our sprint PCS game fact Nebraska has led the nation in rushing 11 times since 1980. 13 times overall. And I got news for you, folks. It's going to be 14 yeah. because Ohio State is over 40 yards behind them per game. And yeah. Ohio State can't catch them now. No, they average 355 yards, Nebraska does rushing. You see today only 267, so they're almost 100 yards below their average. I don't know if that was Brian Dawson or Santa Claus, but somebody on the sideline in red, obviously cheering for the Cornhuskers wearing that uniform. Lewis comes in there, makes a stop along with Sykes, and a loss on the play as Crouch goes down and 545 all that remains don't forget coming up next we're going to have a big battle in Texas it'll be the number 22 Aggies against the 13th ranked Longhorns that'll be our, our game to follow Brent and Gary and Jack are waiting on that one John and Terry in the studio to update you on all those scores as well and we have just under five and a half minutes remaining in this one and it's been a dandy as Nebraska jumped out to a 14 to nothing lead, then 17 unanswered points by Colorado. We've seesawed back and forth in the second half. And with 528 left, we're dead even at 24. Mark Maris guy looking on. He has missed two field goals. He's had two blocks. I think a lot of you remember the game we did last year. Jeremy Aldridge had an opportunity to win. That game in overtime at Folsom Field and ended up going to OT and Eric Crouch won that one for Nebraska. Third down and eight. Crouch is going to keep it. He's got the first down. He's got more. Eric Crouch, touchdown! Crouch won it last year. He might have just won it this year. 26 yards. He sees a crease, forget about it. It didn't take him long to get in the end zone, did it? Nope. He's been beat up and banged around today, but he's just scored his third touchdown, and he's over 100 yards rushing now. Fourth lead change of the ball game, and Brown's extra point is good. Eric Crouch, another 100-yard day on the ground. This, his third touchdown, has put Nebraska back in front. When you eat too much turkey, what's that stuff in it that slows everybody down? Uh, stuffing. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> watch it. Watch, watch uh, Masoni right here. He goes up and takes the pitch man. What Colorado wanted to do is take away Crouch from running the football, force him to pitch it back to the tailback. Whatever that was, that turkey thing I was talking about, the Nebraska fans have shaken it with five minutes left in the ballgame. They are into it right now. Here's the kick. Matt Brunson from the two. Brunson got a little opening. He's got some speed. Brunson across the 30 and out to the 33-yard line. Good field position for Colorado trailing. That's what Nebraska's been so far now when they needed it. Let's see if Colorado can answer. 
Oaks comes up firing. Javon Green with a catch of first down. Green sidesteps the tacklers, and he's to midfield into the 49-yard line. A pickup of 18. Made a lot of good moves on that, and one of the guys coming back, whether it was a defensive lineman or linebacker, made the hit. First down at the 49. Given Colorado another chance with 3.55 to go. They trail by 7, 31 24. We've had four lead changes. Nebraska led 14 to nothing early in the game, then 17 straight points by Colorado. And now Nebraska, their last three possessions has produced 17 points. And they lead 31-24. Now Nebraska asked for a timeout because Colorado came out in four wide receivers and Nebraska didn't have the correct personnel. So they ran it in from the sideline. Little chess game going on between the Cornhuskers and the Buffaloes. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. John. Brad, time for the Burger King update. Coming up next, Texas and quarterback Chris Sims. He'll start the game. Major Apple White practice all week. He is available. It'll be Texas against Texas AM when we're done with your exciting one. He's coming back. And we hope they have as good a one as we have had today in Lincoln, Nebraska, on a crystal clear day after Thanksgiving. A seesaw battle back and forth. Two teams that we told you back when we started this game a little after 11 o'clock central time this morning always seem to play close ball games in the last three or four years it's gone down to the wire and until moments ago we were tied at 24 until Eric Crouch scored from 26 yards out for Nebraska last four games in this series have been decided by 13 points and now here comes the fans in support of the Cornhusker defense third down and 12 here they come Carlos Pope comes on a blitz. Here's a middle screen. Cortland Johnson's got a lot of room in front of him. And Johnson inside the 40. And he's got a first down with that last yes. burst at the very end. Yes. He got the yard he needed. As if he needed it. As if he needed it. He just knew that maybe a couple more yards at the end of this play is what I need for that first down. Vanden Bosch says all we had to do was stop third and 13 or third and 12, and they couldn't. Screen right there to Cortland. Vanden Bosch, 83, is coming back from behind. And makes the tackle, or helps on it anyway. He pulled the ball out, and it looked like uh, he got back on it. Colorado, with three and a half minutes to go, has got a first down at the Nebraska 38-yard line. McCready in motion. Straight give to Cortland Johnson. Jason Lohr has got him all wrapped up. Lohr, the junior... Out of Jenks High, Tulsa, Oklahoma makes his stop. Nebraska's been in a lot of big games this year and over the years, specifically this year against Colorado, against Oklahoma and Kansas State. Colorado has not been in a lot of big games. Their record is three and seven. And uh, you would think that the benefit of experience would go with the guys in the red shirt. Especially with a home field advantage that they have had for the last 30 some years. Oaks under pressure down the middle got it complete down to the 30 yard line to his tight end Graham about a yard and a half short of a first down. Now we're down to two and a half minutes. Don't forget Monday night football. It'll be Brett Favre and the Green Bay Packers. Can they pull off another miracle like they did against the Vikings a few weeks ago. They'll take on the Carolina Panthers nine Eastern six Pacific right here on ABC. Brett Favre seems to have those guys back uh, hungry again. I still pay to watch him play. Here's a toss. Johnson first down. Goes to the 25 yard line. Got five okay, more. Easy. Roll up on the line. And they just keep moving it down the field. All right. You've got two minutes and seven seconds. Colorado has two timeouts left. Every time you make a first, first down, down the clock stops until they move the chains and then they mark the ball ready for play again. Down to the 25 yard line and they have marked it and you see the clock starting to tick under two minutes. Colorado took over its own 32 yard line at the 520 mark and now they're in the eighth play of their drive trying to tie it up. And there's motion on the left side. 
Daniel Graham the tight end came out of his stance. Before the snap, ball start on the offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Only three penalties on Colorado yep. all day long. Gary Barnett, every time I see Gary Barnett, I think of what a great job he did turning around the program at Northwestern, mm -hmm. taking them to the Rose Bowl when nobody thought he could, and then coming back and winning another piece of the Big Ten championship the year after when nobody thought he would. And now playing with a team that has started seven different true freshmen this season, including this one. Oaks and Javon Green catches the back end of the ball. What a catch. And he got to the 20 yard line. Picked up 10, so they got the penalty back and five more. And now it's a timeout taken by Colorado. And that'll be their second. 116 to go. Big drive coming up. I want to thank some of the folks that spent the holiday with us. Our maintenance crew, Keith Pappas, Ed Perez, Ryan Zitlaw, Gene Kotalink, our tech support people, Steve Walder and Brian Dawson. Bart Grignan, Chris Stoffel, G.W. Farrar, our first and ten line this year, Tom Boblett, and John De La Torre, our telco engineer, Bob Zinowitz, cameras all season long, John Lawrence, and Peter Dingle, Jason Jobes, Todd Marshall, Kevin Edmondson, Mike Meyer, Mike Desjardins, and John Brunt, Ingrid Serra, our graphics, and a great singer, by the way. <laughs> our videotape, Todd Coolis, John Wright, Greg Janik, Jerry Stainer, Carmen Peterson, our video this year, Bruce Smith and Jerry Sell, audio, Pat Thornton, Marvin Bronstein, and Karen Hoisin up here in the booth with us, Brad Sheldon, our technical director, our production support staff, Fred Edwards and Eric Duncan, Preston Bentley, Carrie Stevenson. Amanda McGill, Brian Sirota, Pat McGrath, and Clint Deans, our statistician and spotter. And that other group of support people, we call them the Ohio Players. Just some of the folks that spent the holiday with us. We're glad you're spending the day after Thanksgiving with us. And man, are we dishing up something for you here. Possible overtime in the making. Second and five. Oaks goes complete to his tight end, Graham, and he's got a first down, I think, at the 15-yard line. Joe Walker holding on for dear life. Graham has been a big time player, tight end who's had an ankle problem. As where he's wearing an ankle brace today, but is coming up big with some huge catches for first downs. Oaks just calmly that time. Grease just yeah. tosses it there. And the it's difference. A first down. The difference between Oaks now as opposed to the first quarter is huge. First and ten, Colorado at the Nebraska 15. Oaks. Throws over the middle, almost a one-handed catch by Graham. He couldn't hold it. Bounced it off his right hand and then down to his left knee, and it's incomplete. This is the guy, we're talking about Oaks, when Gary Barnett told us he's the best player on our team. He says, we're going with him. That's what you're, uh, that's what you're talking about now, the second-half play of this young freshman quarterback. And his tight end, Bob, Daniel Graham, is going to be, I think, one of the better college football tight ends. He's got the size. He's an excellent blocker. Uh, and he's got the genes. His father, <laughs> Tom Graham, great linebacker at Oregon and played for the San Diego Chargers. Second down at 10. Oaks from the gun. Lofts it to the end zone. Touchdown, Colorado. But on, he's got it. And the Buffaloes a point away from tying it up. There's a flag, but I think it's going to be pass interference. I agree. Seven seconds left. What a great catch and adjustment to the ball by Minardi with Sweeney all over him. Here's the call. Defensive pass interference, decline, touchdown. And how about the freshman Oaks? And now an all important. Point after upcoming as Oaks drops back out of the shotgun, fires it out there, put it where he had to put it. And Minardi made the adjustment, and Sweeney was all over him with the interference. It didn't matter. Decline, it's a touchdown. Minardi holding on to that ball for dear life, and Oaks. Oaks, as you know, doesn't when get I was, much better than that. When I was sitting there as a five year old watching Bill McCartney's Buffaloes for the first time, be able to pull off an upset of Nebraska, and he said, I knew right there. 
I was going to wear a gold helmet someday. I don't know if he thought he's going to be quite in the thick of it this quickly. And don't you know there's just a little bit of adrenaline pumping in that young man right now. He started off, what did he start, 0 for 6? Yeah, 0 for 5 or 6, couple of interceptions. And in the second half alone, 16 of 23, 189 yards, and the biggest hunk and the most important hunk of real estate moments ago for the touchdown. Well, they've had four possessions, and they've scored touchdowns on three of the four touchdowns. Here's a matchup right here. The receiver just going to go down and break to the outside. Look at all the room that Oaks has to throw to on the outside. He's throwing all this room out here, and that's what you want. Throw it to the outside, single coverage, and a nice play and a nice catch. Minardi sees it, keeps his concentration on the ball, and it's a tie ball game or a one-point game at least before the Is there a discussion point. going on whether or not this is going to be a one- or two-point attempt here? Colorado's got everybody around their coaches on the sideline. Well, you know, you're right, because it falls on the left hash mark. They are going for two. Wow. Well, you're on the road, and you're an underdog. You try to play to win without going to OT. Three wideouts to the top of your screen. Colorado goes for two for the lead. Oaks to the end zone. Green. He's got it. He's got it. Javon Green makes the catch, and Colorado's in front. Is that a gutsy call? They said it was their bowl game. They don't want to go home disappointed, I guess. The fifth lead change in that drive, Craig Oaks was six out of eight for 70 yards and a touchdown, and he just threw a two-point laser shot to Javon Green. Man. Big-time play. Is that young man grown up today? We've seen him grow up. I like the call. You roll your quarterback out. You buy some time. Your three wide receivers are to the wide side of the field. Put the ball in the left hash mark. Oh, oh catch. I caught it twice. He caught it twice. He caught it once, and then he caught it again. Gary Barnett, whose team lost so many close games the first three weeks of the season, and look at the jubilation on the face and the making of a freshman quarterback who, as Grease said a little while ago, isn't a freshman anymore. That's for sure. Wow. Making his seventh start of the year. In the biggest game of his career so far. And what a disappointment on the other side. Yeah, we still got 47 seconds left. The way this game's going, who knows? So back deep. Joe Walker will trot back there. And Joe Walker's a guy that can change a game in a hurry. Randy Stella will flank him. Carlos Polk can only look on and hope and pray now because the defense's day is done. These moments will be remembered by these young men for the rest of their lives. 27 seniors on Tom Osborne Field for the last time today. They don't want it to end this way, but they're needing a big chunk of yardage to get in field goal range. Line drive kick taken by one of the up men, though, and this is going to give them good field position because it's out to the 42-yard line. Duran Diedrich, the third-string tailback, gets Nebraska in good position. Our production assistants, John Coral and Charlie Vanacore. Jake Leeson, our technical manager. Mike Haskett, our production manager. Fred King's our associate director and is not a good singer. <laughs> Raymond Martin's our associate producer. Today's game was directed by Chip Dean, produced by Jay Rothman. The coordinating producer of ABC's college football is Bob Goodrich. Bob Tom's our director of production. The executive producer of ABC's college football is John Filippelli. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz. Nebraska with still a chance, but time running out. Crouch going deep for Davison. And it is almost picked off, and Davison and almost took it off Phil Jackson's hands. Incomplete. 37 seconds left. Now, if you're thinking about field goal, Josh Brown's longest field goal of the year is 40 yards, and he has had trouble today and this season. But here's another look at the long pass play. Well, you... Almost intercepted. And that almost caught off the ricochet. Right. Crouch back to live action goes complete. Tiptoeing out of bounds at the 47-yard line is John Gibson. 
So they get a little closer to the first down. The first down marker really doesn't matter too much right now. Well, Bob and Brad, as Nebraska is trying to come back from behind in the last second of this ball game to win, they need a big play. And someone who has been conspicuously missing from this offense has been number 12, Bobby Newcomb. Not only has he not been involved, I don't even think they tried to get him the ball. They just use him as a decoy. Yeah. He hasn't touched it. And now they go right back to Gibson. Same play, same result. First down, out of bounds at the 45 with 29 seconds left. Well, you would think that if you get Nebraska down at the end of the ball game and you got to crouch, has got to throw from the shotgun, that that's exactly where you want them, having to throw the football. But you never know. Nebraska looking for its ninth win, trying to stay in the BCS picture. Late drive, and there's Bobby Newcomb. Swanee called for him and he got it. The clock will stop. The clock will stop until they mark the ball ready for play when the chains are set. And it's at the 31-yard line. So another pass play, and they might have an opportunity for a kick. You got a timeout left. One timeout left for Nebraska. First down at the Colorado 31. Eric Crouch just going to keep it himself. Only got to the 30, though. Now you got to use your timeout. That play is going to be questioned a little bit. Clock stop with 10 seconds well, left. You're an option team. If that's what you do best, maybe you could get a long run from an option if the other team is expecting it. But if it doesn't work, then you got to stop the clock. Right now, it would be a 47-yard field goal attempt. Career long for Josh Brown is 42. I mentioned earlier, 40 is the longest he's kicked one this year. And right now, Dominic Riola is saying, if we give you a chance and you miss, you're dead. <laughs> no, wait a minute. I know he's not doing that. I just made that up. Uh, Chevrolet players of the game, while we've got 10 seconds left, there were a lot of candidates, let me tell you. But we're going to go with Cortland Johnson, over 150 yards and three touchdowns today for Colorado. And Kyle Vandenbosch, who quite frankly, I thought was all over the field today for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And in recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. That guy was definitely in the running, Craig Oates. But let me tell you, folks, we'll do enough games that he'll win plenty of Chevy awards isn't before that, he's done. And that's the truth. Don't forget Texas A&M and Texas will be coming up next. And that should be a good one, too. But we're down to the final couple of plays. Got to stop the clock after the play. You won't have time to run this play and get a field goal in. Throw to the outsides. Crouch. Our defense sets, fires out. Newcomb's got it. He's out of bounds at the 12. Great play. Bobby Newcomb unused all day. Two receptions of the last three plays. This one's good for 17 yards. And here comes a field goal unit for the win. Great throw and catch. There's a story on Josh Brown. His career long, his season long. He won't have to worry about either one of those right here. This is a 29-yard field goal attempt to win the game for Nebraska. And what would be a miraculous comeback in the final 40 seconds. Brown for the win. The kick is up. And it is good. He got it. Nebraska wins it. ABC, a battle in the Lone Star State, bragging rights between Texas A&M and Texas. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, keyword ABC's college football. 
Well, it was quite a battle. Hope you have a great holiday weekend, everybody. For Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan and our entire ABC crew, Brad Nessler from Lincoln, Nebraska, this has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence.